This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Perk, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. <laughs> Capes and Lunatics podcast. This is Ray from Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast, and also Last Sons of Krypton, the uh, Superman podcast. Just wanting to drop a huge congratulations to everyone involved in the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Uh, a huge congratulations on your 150th episode. My golly gosh, that is so cool. I mean, um, not to take anything away, this is a big 150 for you guys, but uh, my gosh, you, you've got hundreds of other episodes as well um, uh, in and around the Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics sidekicks as well. Uh, so a huge th- uh, thank you as well for, for being such an entertaining and informative podcast across the board. Um, a big shout out to the likes of um, to Phil, Phil N. Perich, um, Charlie the Professor, uh, Lilith Hellfire, Matt Kona, uh, Will, Will Allred, um, all great, uh, Tyler as well and James, um, you guys do absolutely stellar work, uh, cannot think of listening to podcasts without you guys, so um, again, a huge thank you, I'm looking forward to this 150 as well, uh, this trivia game, mystery guest, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to listen to the Master Doom himself, Rob. So um, again, a huge congratulations to everyone. Um, and may you enjoy it to the utmost. Um, so yeah, enjoy. Hey everyone, it's Phil. Yes, I know. If you're listening to this on the podcast, you're in the middle of Capes and Lunatics episode 150 on YouTube. You can find this chat as its own separate video, but... Today, right here, myself and uh, the Quantum Zone's own Mr. Matt Kona, we're going to talk uh, Star, uh, yeah, Star Trek Picard season one, the whole season. So, red alert, uh, spoiler alert! If you haven't seen it, we're going to spoil the heck out of it. So, all right, so yeah, you want to warp ahead in the podcast? Ah. Uh... All right, all right. So, Mr. Macona, who's been working through what you've been uh, binging a few Star Trek, some of the old Star Treks too, right? I know you said you're watching Voyager. Yeah, I have had um, I'm watching Voyager. Well, all right. So it started out, it kind of started out with Picard. So uh, most people who are listening to this, as it's pretty fresh, know that. Most people are staying at home. Some of them are working. I am not one of those. Phil, sorry, you are working still. But I, um, I have had plenty of free time. And I was watching Picard before all this happened, all the uh, craziness that started happening. And I I was, wa- I would give it a couple of weeks. So I would watch a couple at a time and I would read up on some articles. And there was one article that... Just uh, it had a list for Borg specific episodes to go back and rewatch, and because all the Star Trek series, except for Discovery, I think, are on Amazon Prime. So I, I went and, and and watched and rewatched some ones that I had seen from Next Generation, and I'd never seen Voyager before. So I watched a couple of those, and um, I, I mean I had seen Voyager maybe one or two times back when it aired, but. 
So I watched the specific Borg ones for that based on the list. And there's only one Borg episode of Deep Space Nine. It's the very first one, just to get a little backstory about uh, uh, how everyone got there. So I watched those, and uh, I, I, I dug Voyager, so I kind of wanted to just start watching that from the beginning. And then I started watching Deep Space Nine just to mix things up, and I'm multiple seasons in. Deep Space Nine has taken the lead. Is from in terms of uh, catching my attention a little bit more because they're more they have longer arcs, which is something we're going to talk about. Which Picard is with Voyager, uh, it's a lot more episodic week to week, so you can tune in most of the time and not be lost in a in a long ongoing story. Besides the fact that the crew of Voyager is very very far away from home, trying to get back, but. Uh, Deep Space Nine sort of has a, a little bit more going in terms of long-term stories. I mean, Star Trek Next Generation was very episodic, too. I mean, we kind of grew to know more about the characters and their backstories, and they related to future episodes more. But it was also one that I started watching as a kid in syndication. So it was on every night at 7 o'clock. But new episodes were still airing. I think it was on Saturdays. So... Um, some things were, I mean, usually if there was a one or two parter, they would play them back to back. But for the most part, I was, uh, they just aired them willy nilly. So they went from having, uh, collars on their shirts to having the tight shirts with no collars in the first two seasons. And, uh, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm, long story short, I'm watching a lot of Star Trek. I've got some old Star Trek communicator magazines that I bought from eBay. I read like three of them yesterday. And um, I have not read the Picard Countdown comic book that is the oh. unofficial prequel to the Picard show. But I know it's out there. So when comic book stories are allowed to open again, I might go pick that up. That's probably digital. That's have you read like, that? I have not. That's probably digital. Oh, true. Yeah, you would yeah, think it's digital yeah. somewhere. Who who put that out? What yeah, um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna say, I mean, I'm just this is broad speculation, but the uh, what's the what's the company that uh, IDW? I'm gonna guess IDW. Maybe yeah. But I really do, do not know. Um, let's see. I'll do a little research. But yeah, I'm watching a lot, a lot of Star Trek. I'm catching up um, for missed time, and I was excited, super. Next Generation is my first love, so to have Picard come back, and this is, you know, the last thing that we saw him in was Nemesis, which I I remember liking at the time. It's a bit of a tough ending, and it's kind of uh, not as revered as the others in terms of uh, other Star Trek fans, how they how that happened, uh, how it happened to ends. The, I mean, even with the cast, like Picard kind of wasn't that happy with it. He wanted another story. And I think that when he got the script for this, it kind of appealed to him. Oh yeah. They more. said, I think he even said like for years, they've tried to get him to come back to do some kind of next generation thing. And he said, no, but I guess he said, if he was coming back for this, it had to be something different. It couldn't be like, you know, the same as what came before. Mm -hmm. So he must, yeah. have, he must have liked this. I like that. He's like, <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart's like an 80-year-old actor, but he's playing a 94-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do reveal that in the uh, <laughs> episode 10. I was like, 94? I mean, they, it, it's... I mean, I mean, I have so many different thoughts about this. It is IDW that put out the Picard countdown. Oh, uh, yeah, it sounds about up. right, yeah. So, um, yeah, three. it was three issues. It started in November... I think probably right before the show started. And I think issue two came out before episode two, December. Then the last one was late January. So And here, let me look up one. Uh, there's I'm actually, I keep meaning to like download it or whatever. There's, there's a, like a prequel novel out there too. It's like a hardback. I heard about that. Yeah, in fact, so I went to in Massachusetts. Basically they put out a, a voluntary call for, non-essential businesses to yeah. to shut down and i i went to my uh local comic shop and went and got some some stuff before that happened 
And the, the woman who was working there mentioned that there was a novel. They were sold out of it, but um, yeah. But yeah, it's, so many Star Trek novels. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I keep meaning to like download this. Yeah, because I, I found yeah, it's uh, Star Trek Picard: uh, The Last Best Hope. Okay. And for those of you who aren't maybe not be big readers, there's also an audio book of it. Also, looks like. Oh, nice. So, uh, last best hope. Right. Yep. I'm pretty sure it's, um, I'm looking for the description here. I'm pretty sure it, uh, I don't know if it's, uh, during the time when he's like helping the Romulans, uh, evacuate and stuff. It's like, yeah, it's like stuff leading up to the show. It could be. I know that the, the comic book deals a little bit more with the origins of his, uh, Romulan housemates in his chateau in Paris. That we meet in the first episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those Romulans. Yeah, they're like now. Former, uh, yeah, those yeah. Romulans. Aren't they like former? Are they? Are they former Tau Shiar? I'm trying to remember. It's been a while. I, I've been watching it week to week. I think they are. I think they are. Yeah. That was what. That was one Rebels. of my only disappointments. Is like we didn't get back to them. But I guess maybe by season two. That's true. Yeah. There's uh, there's a lot that's that's uh, pretty wide open. I guess. So so what? Yeah. I mean, we don't want to jump right to the, right to the end. No, but no, there, no, no. There's, there's. I mean, th- this show has a has a pretty big cast. A lot of new characters, a lot of people who are, who are uh, familiar faces that they're on other Star Trek shows that come back, and it. Uh, so th- yeah, th- there's a lot more possibilities to going f- going forward. So what did you going think? Ten forward. So do you remember, what did you think when you watched, like, the first episode? Were you, like, really impressed, or were you just like, oh, this is the next generation, or? Uh, well, I, I did li- I did like it. I mean, it, it's kind of, it, it's tough, because it, the next generation, it was, you know, it ended in uh, the late 90s, right? 94. The, yeah, the late 90s, 90. seven seasons, started in 88, uh, mid-90s, mid-90s. Yeah, yeah, 94, I think. And, yeah. um... Yeah, ninety four, and then they did the the three movies up till two thousand one, I think, maybe two thousand two. And uh, so I know that I mean the the show, the sets, and and the format, it, it's very place and time. And there's been obviously like a revolution in television and in movies, especially when it comes to uh, science fiction, which is like the graphics and all the digital attributes that can be added to it are so high ends now. So this was, I knew it wasn't going to be a set piece like next generation. And it, it was more of, I guess what you would call a prestige television sort of. And it was big. It was kind of like, you know, like a movie, like a Marvel movie or a star Wars movie. in in oh, some yeah. regard. And, uh, but I'm asked, so I knew it wasn't going to be like next gen. It was just going to be a, character and in the years after the the three movies came out so it, it i was a little bit surprised that uh i would see boston in the first episode I'm recording this in massachusetts boston. and uh they di- i did i did find a landmark a, a very important landmark faneuil hall marketplace where the american revolution was planned pretty much Ooh. and uh that's still there along with some uh you know fancy space buildings and the Ferengi commerce society or something like that. Oh yeah. Cause haven't you um, been, have, haven't you been reading the Ferengi rules of acquisition? I, I did. I, 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 that was in my uh, reading yesterday. I have a uh, Ferengi rules of acquisition. It's not all 285 rules though. It's only about 70, which is what? kind of a, a rip. It's kind of fitting for those Ferengis out there. You know, they want you to buy the next couple editions. <laughs> to get all the rules. Volume, but, um, volume I do one. have my Ferengi. Fer- I have a Ferengi <laughs> beanie baby right here. Someone made a lot of profit off this. <laughs> There's two bars of Latinum. For it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. First episode, I was going to be hyped. I mean, I feel like I knew I was going to like this show anyway because for the getting back to the reasons we were talking about earlier, it's... It, it, Patrick Stewart isn't hard up for money. The guy, even though he's old, is still in movies. He's been in the you know, all the X Men, Logan, and 
and he's doing plays all the time too. He loves that. And so he wasn't going to, this isn't a cash grab. This is going to be a labor of love. Someone took the time to, to woo him with this. So I, I was on board. I, I was open to anything. I didn't really know what it was going to be or where it was going to go. I didn't read too much into it. Uh, I, I liked to go in a little bit blind and, and yeah, the, it, it, it hooks you in. I mean, obviously you see all these new characters who are like, all right, who's this? I'll, I'll get to know them eventually. And uh, I mean, that's kind of like a broader topic because you know, it can't always be or just a reunion. I think they even mentioned it in one of the first few episodes. Like, he could have called up Jordy or Worf, but it's like, those guys have lives. And so it's just, you got to meet some new people. Although we did see some familiar faces in this first season. We got Riker. We oh, got yeah. Troy. No, that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But they didn't, like, overload it with you off no. the top. Like, all right, he's in trouble. Let's, uh, you know, get on the horn and get the band back together. It wasn't quite like that. And, uh, he was, uh, but I did like how they handled the guests, the guest appearances and stuff. Although sometimes, you know, and this has been a thing with Star Trek and it's probably just in the actors contracts where if you watch the credits and I usually do, especially if it's something new, you can't skip the intro anyway. It can sometimes spoil who is in the episode. Yes. You know, you're watching the beginning credits. Like, I think episode nine, you know, guest starring Brett Spiner. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Cool. What's happening now? Or even and, or even the finale where it's like- The guess, worst was- There's a- No, episode 10, it was like guest starring Jonathan yeah. Frakes. It's like, oh, no. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, the worst or the worst or best example of that was um, there was an episode of Voyager that I was watching. And before you even really know what the episode's about- it says guest starring so and so as Amelia Earhart. <laughs> so like, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I know. They Amelia should... Earhart's going to be in this one. I mean, yes. I know that's like TV, but it's like they should save all that for like the end of the episode, just so it's like you know, surprise. Yeah, I agree. But uh, oh, but uh, maybe, maybe oh, we can petition them for episode two. But yeah, you're doing the big Voyager rewatch. What did you think of uh, Seven of Nine in this series? Well. I had oh yeah. First of all, I I, I liked Seven of Nine. I haven't got to Seven of Nine oh. in my Voyager. What Matt? I think she's not until like season, season four, four or something. But yeah. I'm so I, yeah. I think I'm in season two, oh. near the end of season two. But uh, yeah, so I I was familiar with Seven of Nine because I had rewatched the certain Borg episodes that they had uh, mentioned. So it would be good to rewatch leading up to Picard. And even though I knew that she was going to be in that episode, it was still a cool moment, you know? Mm -hmm. It wasn't quite on your left, on your left end game. Cool. Like, yeah, but it, but it was awesome. You know, like she came in, who's this unidentified ship. It's about to blow up being the person on board. Boom. Everyone's favorite former Borg. Seven of nine. That's right. So that was great. Yeah. I mean, she came in, she's like, She's a little different, and you know, she's basically like uh, this warrior helping like the ex Borg and stuff. And it, and it, at first, I was like, man, she's way different than she was on Voyager. But again, this was like this is like twenty years after Voyager, though. Yeah, so she's been through some stuff. I think she was yeah. she's working with uh, people in the neutral zone, mm -hmm. which is always uh, going to be a, a, a hectic job, anyhow. And, and uh, that was cool. I, so. I mean, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but so one thing that, that kind of, they, it, it's a kind of ironic that Picard season one tried to do was strike a balance between one long storyline yeah. and individual episodes that sort of were episodic that you were kind of contained. And even though we meet seven or nine at the end of one episode, is it episode four or five? I think it's three. I got to check my notes. But, um, her, she has like basically a full episode where uh, it's focused on what she wants to do. And uh, so that was kind of the first indication. I was like, okay, they're trying to do this episodic thing because she goes away at the end. And as we'll talk later, I mean, if everyone's listening to this, they've probably seen it, but she does come back yes. for, for more episodes in a, and that's way better 
you know, I mean, the first episode was cool, but when she uh, gets real serious, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, on and, the board cube. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, kicking butt. Yes. And then, uh, oh, we also. So you watch the week. I I I skipped ahead a couple. Yeah. I binged here and there, but I couldn't be patient. I couldn't wait every week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean, they th- they got creative with the show because it's like you know. Picard, I mean, he's the hero of the story, but it's like it's an eight year old actor. It's like he can't be he can't be like throwing punches every two seconds and diving off of stuff and you know, and that really wasn't Captain Picard. He wasn't right. always like, you know, this you know I mean he had some action, but he wasn't always, you know, he wasn't Kirk. He wasn't like punching guys out every episode either. Yeah. And he's out of his element. You're used to him being on the bridge mm-hmm. with the Enterprise or in his ready room or somewhere. And that wasn't there. He eventually gets a ship, and but he's not the person in charge. I mean, he is kind of calling the shots, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like he's the reason that they're on the ship together. But it's a it's a very different dynamic. It's not like he's back in the saddle again, and everyone's like, ah, uh huh, yep, this is it. This is what we're waiting for. It's it's new. It's a different direction, and. Uh, like I don't know about the people who who made this. I assume they're huge Star Trek fans. But do you know if they were involved in any other shows? Because sometimes there's a lot of crossover between from Next Gen. I know Next Gen, DS9, and Voyager kind of all were on the. Well, Voyager wasn't on the air the same time as Next Gen, but they all kind of were on and crossing over each other. A what the bit, characters? You know? Uh the. But, but like the the back like the production team, oh, the directors oh, and writers, um, the writing staff. Yeah. No, I'm not sure. I I'm, didn't recognize the names. Yeah. Like that Akiva Goods was it Akiva Goldsman or whatever. Um, I believe he's work. He, yeah. He, I believe he's working on Titans. So, yeah, th- I think a lot. Uh, okay. There's yeah. Alex Kurtzman. Yeah, I think there are a lot of like newer people that are like in. Um, and then what was it? Uh, oh, I was watching Disco- Star Trek Discovery the other day, and I think I saw what was it? Uh, it was like Eugene Roddenberry or something. So I don't know if it's like Gene Roddenberry's kid or something. Which I don't know if he's uh, oh, touching Picard, cool. but I was I would assume they would be ta- you know taking notes or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I think there's a Roddenberry involved somewhere. Yeah, it, I mean there was another thing that was kind of an overarching thing. And this is, I don't know, like it, it's, this isn't really like a complaint. It's not, it's just something that I've noticed. And it's, it's even like a weird, it's a weird thing to hear fans kind of talk about, but you do hear people will complain about anything, but there was, and it's not a negative, it, from my perspective, it's not a negative, but I'm only aware of it because people talk about it. And I hear it talked about a lot, especially with the newer trilogy of Star Wars movies. But they talk about fan service, so like oh, all this fan service. Why are they referencing stuff? Oh, like why are they referencing the things that you love and giving people who are super fans like a little bit of excitement? I don't know. Why are you getting mad at them for that? But uh, the Picard, especially in the first episode, you know, I mentioned the Ferengis, and they also mentioned some other things like the Daystrom Institute. It's named after Doctor Richard Daystrom. Who is a scientist from uh, 68, 1968 episode of the original series, mm. and uh, the institute gets mentioned a bunch in in Next Gen Voyager and Deep Space Nine. Oh yeah, uh, and even one thing that kind of caught me off guard in the first one was the first episode was that they they referenced something from the 2009 Star Trek re- reboot, which is. Uh, Kind of interesting, not not really expecting that. Oh yeah, about the destruction of Romulus, you know, and uh, the disaster there. But, yeah, oh yeah, cause the movie, yeah, because the Spock from this timeline goes back in time, creates like a whole different timeline. Him and the what was mm-hmm. it, Nero or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they tried they tried to incorporate a lot into these, like even like. Uh, Hugh, who was like a Borg they met on Next Generation, uh, Echeb, who you'll get to in Voyager in the later seasons, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah. like Bruce I, Maddox, yes. is, is is a is a big name, and and I rewatched earlier today uh, just to kind of because it gets brought up a lot. I, I rewatched 
The Measure of a Man, which is the episode where uh, Bruce Maddox tries to uh, get data transferred so he can disassemble him and learn from him. And data has to basically have a hearing with Picard uh, representing him and Riker begrudgingly representing Bruce Maddox about whether or not data has the the ability to make a choice about whether or not he wants to do that or if he's the property of Starfleet. And um, Bruce Maddox eventually, by the end of the trial, which is in Data's favor, of course, is uh, changes his mind, comes around on him. But at the beginning, you know, he keeps referring to him as it, and you're like, it, hey, who's this guy? This guy's, this guy's a jerk. We love Data. No. And then we get to see him die at the card. But um, that was a shocking moment, too. So how do you want to do this? You want to just go through? I mean, I don't have the play-by-play, blow-by-blow of each episode. Yeah. I have some little tidbits about bonus stuff in there. I mean, I was just but, trying to, I was just going to try to yeah. go in order. It's like, okay, hey, we met these characters this yeah. episode. But it's like the first episode, I mean, this this young woman comes to Picard for help after getting attacked. And then, you know, after she's killed, you know, it's revealed she's, a, you know, she's one of these, uh, what do they call them? Uh, synthetic. Yeah, synthetics. Because yeah, rogue synthetics. Yes, because the synth- synthetic life has been outlawed after the attack on Mars. Uh, mm-hmm. Then we discover. Yeah, she has a vision of Picard, and that's why she seeks him out because he's also on the uh, the the TV or whatever the equivalent is. Then kind of uh, talking a little smack about Starfleet when a reporter asks him a question. It kind of goes against the toe in the company line. Which causes some ruffles. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's like ripples. that's like the big that's like the big yeah. theme of season one. It's like yeah, years ago, uh, what was it? Romulus's son was going Nova, so uh, Picard leaves the Enterprise mm-hmm. and like heads up this task force to help the Romulans. Uh, well, they evacuate. They help them evacuate, and then I guess what a lot of was it the fleet was on Mars or something? But yeah, the, these rogue synthetics attack Mars, and there's this big attack, and then after that, like, Starfleet basically abandons the Romulan, so Picard quits Starfleet. He's like, mm-hmm. you know, this isn't my Starfleet anymore. Yeah. And retires to his French... And <laughs> retires to his French vineyard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the Romulans, they're, they're in the midst of a reclamation project, so they must be scattered around... The universe, maybe some of them are on Remus. On a, yeah, on a board, on a board, on a board cube. That's the reclamation project. Yes. Yeah, that's the great reveal at the end of. Is it the end of the first episode? I think. Yeah, they pull out, and yeah, it's the a second board, episode. It's yeah. either the first or the second. Yeah, they pull out. And it's like a big yeah. board cube. Yes. But yeah, that this, was that was pretty awesome. But yeah, this girl comes to Wolf of Picard to help. She she eventually gets destroyed, but then he uh, Picard learns that which she, is a shock. But he learned she had a twin sister because they get created in pairs because they were the daughters of Data. Yeah. <laughs> and even though I don't think he gets mentioned in this particular series, uh, Data had a twin, to, in a way, Lore, Lore. Yeah. who could use contractions and was evil. <laughs> uh, so... That makes sense. So yeah, it was a uh, like dot. Basically, one particle of data could be recreated to make new ones. And there's images that he made in a painting of what his daughter ended up daughters ended up looking like, uh, all grown up. Picard sees that and goes on a little bit of a manhunt for them, for her, for the uh, other daughter, and has to get a starship and go in it without the help of. Uh, Starfleet. I, I did think it was pretty funny when he he said that he's willing to take a demotion from admiral to captain <laughs> in I order know. to get access to a ship. Isn't that? And he had to put on that security badge, that sticker to go in. Like, Don't you know who I am? I'm kind of a legend around here. I've ever heard of Captain Picard Day. Come on, haven't you heard of the Picard maneuver? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my lord! Which was used. To get away from Ferengis. <laughs> yes. Oh my lord! There's a there's a whole inside joke about that thing. Have you been watching any of the episodes of The Ready Room with Will Wheaton? We don't. So I have I have not, but I want to go and, and check those out now that if you're listening to this in the uh, 
month. Actually, it, it, it end, the offer ends at the end of Mar- uh, April 23rd, but you can get CBS All Access for free for a month. Yes. So I might go check that out and then check out the uh, Star Trek, uh, the new show. What's it called again? Discovery. The, uh, yeah, Discovery. Yeah, yeah Discovery's actually some of those though. But yeah, Discovery's cool. It's like a prequel. It's like right before the original series. Uh, because Pike, you got Captain Pike, who you know, in season two, who you know, the guy who played Black Bolton in Humans is uh Captain Pike. He does a much better job here. So you know, give, mm. give the guy good material. He can. He yeah, does a good job. Yeah. Oh, which says uh, Pike City is named after home of the uh, Pike City baseball team that gets mentioned in DS9. Oh, that yeah. Cisco's girlfriend's brother plays for them. Oh, but no, on <laughs> but no, what I was saying on the ready room, they were talking about the Picard maneuver. I guess like on the set of Next Generation, they had something they called the Picard maneuver. You know, when they pull down their shirts <laughs> and stuff, they called that the Picard maneuver <laughs> because I guess Gene Roddenberry nice. in the beginning wanted their uniforms to always be like you know flat and straight and everything so yeah so yeah every time he'd get up you know you know patrick stewart would pull the thing down of course jonathan franks did it later on too but yeah they called that the the picard maneuver oh yeah (laughs) that's great so we never see the picard maneuver on a next generation it just gets referenced yes from the episode the battle Season one, episode nine. Yeah, because yeah, because that's what was it the was it the finale? Yeah, he because uh, when what's her face says, oh, was that from the Enterprise? Like, no, the Stargazer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the ship that Picard uh, that got lost, and he ended up getting court-martialed about. Yeah. Oh, and what I was gonna yeah. say, what did you think about the Romulans in this uh, series, especially uh, the main the main guy, uh, the our British Romulan, I call it. <laughs> Yeah, what's his name? Nikus or something? Something here. I'm gonna look up his cast list. Yeah. Uh, but he's basically yeah, ba- nah, he bas- basically Narek. Like, Narek. Yeah, but basically to find the planet of the synthetics, he basically like seduces Data's daughter. Yeah, he totally gaslights her because he's really running the whole reclamation project for the Borg uh, of the Borg cube. But he is also involved in the uh, the secret Romulan undergrounds. They want to find the home planet. They want to find where where Maddox is, yes. and possibly the uh, was it Doctor June, the man who created Data, and because they know that there's more of these uh, replicants out there, and they want to kill them. So he's yeah seducing uh, his girlfriend uh, Soji, right? And uh, and Soji doesn't know yet that that she is artificial life, yeah, no. and so he's trying to like sweet talk her and you know romance her. But I I thought he was a uh, he was a great villain along with his sister who was even more evil. I think. Um, yeah, just I, I love the Romulans as as baddies as Ray might say. But, you know, it's always a little bit tough to tell, especially like over the years, different incarnations of Star Trek had different, uh, different looking Romulans. Yes. And they did, they did fill, they filled that in a little bit. I think in the first episode with the housekeepers saying that people from, uh, Northern Romulus are the (laughs) ones with the forehead indentations. Yeah. Something. So he was a Southern Romulan, Romulan, uh, I guess, with a British accent. Yeah, uh, but he was—I liked him. I mean, I, I liked to hate him. I, I thought it was a good, yeah. good bad guy, but classic I, villain. But I, I love, uh, yeah, and I also love Picard's crew. I mean, like, well, like we were saying, Data's daughter Soji was good. Uh, we got, uh, oh, what's the doctor's name? Doctor. Uh, What's Agnes's name? Uh, yeah, yeah, Agnes. Uh, she's um, she was like the leader, the leading um, cybernetics researcher and in art of yeah, and cybernetics, artificial life, and and we we learn later that she she's kind of a bit of a mole, somewhat involuntarily, mm-hmm. because Commodore Commodore O, who's a high ranking Starfleet official was posing as a Vulcan, but she was really Southern Romulan. And, uh, in her Ray-Ban she, sunglasses. She did a minor, 
<laughs> yeah. Did, did the old one-handed mind meld with her and showed her what will happen if artificial life is allowed to exist. And it was basically a pretty cool sequence of uh, hell on earth breaking out, oh, essentially. Yeah. And they said, you have to go, you have to kill Maddox, you have to kill the destroyer, as Soji is being referred to. And she chews a tracking device so they can keep where she is. That's all revealed like yeah. later on in the series. But yeah, that yeah, gives some real uh, depth to an otherwise likable character where you're like, oh, should I hate this person? I mean, she killed Maddox to basically to fulfill part of this plot. I mean, she's she's essentially brainwashed into doing what she thinks is right. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of sh- it was, there's a lot of talking moments in this, especially for uh, a Star Trek branded show, as well as the shock of uh, some swear words occasionally, which kind of threw me off first time I was watching it. I know this is network TV. I know. But I, uh, but the first time, first it's time- never Picard that says it. Yeah. Yeah. The F bombs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was a little jarring. I mean, I'm not, I'm all for freedom of speech and everything, but I mean, in the, it wasn't forced in there, Yeah, no. but I didn't, think that they really needed to it was just weird yeah i I don't know i think they i think they feel like they got to give you extra so you're paying for it but it's like you know we're here for star trek yeah we don't you know i'm not expecting uh you know swear words from star trek yeah i mean i'm sure that there's been some klingon swear words put in their native tongue slipped into some next gen over the years but yeah uh, it it was weird i don't know something stuck out to me but yeah sorry you were going through the crew and of course, uh, we had one of his old, old pals oh, that he Raffi. served with. Oh, Raffi. We never saw. Raffi. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Raffi. She knows a guy who who uh, has a ship. Ca- Captain Rios, who and... Ca- Captain Rios, who's all his uh, holograms look exactly like him. <laughs> yes, yes, he has holograms, including an emergency medical hologram, which was great. When he says, please state the nature of your medical emergency, sort of a tribute to the doctor from yes. the Voyager. And uh, the engineering hologram has a Scottish accent. Yes. A little bit of a tribute to Scotty. Yeah. See, that's the thing. We got some next gen people cool. on this show, and I want to see the rest of the next gen cast, but I want to see some Voyager people on here, too. Yeah. I mean, they're out there. Yep. They're around. Got seven or nine, you know. Guess is available, bro. Yes. Oh, oh. No, she's, at least she's she's nine. She's dead by now. No. <laughs> but uh, no, the uh, the last uh, well, yeah, the the other member of the crew, uh, Elnor. Yes, Elnor, the Romulan orphan nun. He, he's a male nun. He was raised. He's he was kind of a raised, colony of he was mostly, kind of raised, mostly females. Yeah, he was raised by like Romulan warrior nuns or something. Yes. Yep. But Picard spent some time with him in his young formative years. Read the Three Musketeers to him, and then basically had to leave. He he didn't go out for a pack of cigarettes, but he left because <laughs> of the uh, the whole Romulan evacuation thing and the attack. So he had to get out of Dodge, but but yeah, he goes back and um, he asks for help. He, he's he, so he's kind of iced out at, at first, and then goes to a, a ball that is Romulan only, and uh, well, a bit of a scuffle comes out, and then and he comes. Uh, Elnor comes and defends him and binds his sword to him, and is uh, one of my favorite members of the crew. Pretty cool. Okay, yeah, he's kind, of, he's kind of like Picard's samurai or something, yes. Yeah. And then, like we said, we, they he's ev- there. He's the alien. Yeah. Like we said, they eventually, they, they meet up with Seven and Nine, but then she leaves for a while. They get her back at the end of the season. Uh, but yeah, because they go to the board cube uh, to find Soji, and then uh, all hell breaks loose, so... I love how Picard and Soji just, like, take yeah. like, this magical, like, you know, portal, you know? <laughs> Well, the portal that that Hugh had 
it's that, like that he knew about because it, it was for the Borg Queen. Yeah, you can go up to forty thousand years away. So, there was, was a, another thing that Star Trek: The Next Generation didn't have. Uh, you know, they they had fights that that were always a little bit awkward looking, but this was like there's serious action movie moments oh, in yeah. this, and a lot of uh, a lot of cool sequences, and and the whole thing with the fighting the Borg or the Romulans who were on the Borg cube part and Borgs were fighting too eventually mm -hmm. it was real cool and real well done. And Elnor was great. And he had some awesome quotations as well. It's like, just ask them a question. Do you want to live? Or die? Uh -huh. yeah. But yeah, lots of action, but then, uh, yeah, Picard and Soji take the portal and meet up with uh, Riker, Troy, and their daughter. Yeah, at the number two rock from the sun planet. <laughs> yes, Riker, Troy, and their daughter uh, Kestra. Do you remember? Do you know what significance the name Kestra has? Uh, no, I don't. That was Troy's sister, older sister, who died when Troy was a baby. Oh. Yeah, I think it was it the last season. It's either season either six season six or seven. Yeah, they reveal that on next gen. So yeah, yeah, and they meet the daughter first. Yes, she she wants shoots an arrow at them. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, again, not a lot of action in that episode. But I love that episode. It was one of my favorites. Probably next to like the yeah, and stuff. It, it, yeah, it was great. I mean, Frakes, I think he directed that one too. I think he directed two of the episodes this season. But Troy was all, it was great to see her again. Mm -hmm. And of course, Riker, who who is in in total dad mode too, which is kind of funny. Make just it, yelling through the window and yeah, making pizza yeah. in the outdoor pizza oven. It was good. <laughs> yeah, they got they got to make an addendum to the Neelix Star Trek cookbook. Put that pizza recipe in there somewhere. Do they have a Star Trek cookbook? There is, yeah. Oh. Neelix is on the cover in his chef outfit from Voyager. Yeah. How Captain Janeway likes I want to know if there's recipes for drinks. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, Captain Janeway's coffee. Uh... Yeah. I, th I don't think it's strictly Voyager stuff. I don't have it, but who knows? As I get more and more... Uh, Stir crazy. I've been ordering some weird stuff online, hence the rules of acquisition paperback book, which you can read in about five minutes. Yeah. But um, also, it would have been more appropriate if on the cover of the book was uh, Tuvix, which is yes. Tuvok and Neelix combined, because Janeway said that she prefers Tuvix's cooking to Neelix's. Yes. <laughs> but then she, but then she murdered him. So uh, oh. Maybe that's <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, recipe for for uh, fried tuvix. Oh, uh, Man, you're brutal. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, great. It was just great acting. And this is sort of like I think that you probably liked it for the same reason that I did, which is there were some next gen episodes that are you know they're great characters, and to see yeah. these characters that that we haven't seen for a long time interacting together in a way that we also haven't really seen for a long time because the movies, you know, they didn't have long drawn out, having a meal together parts. It was pretty much go, go, go. They had a mission, they had an action, they had 90 minutes to do it and what they normally have 26 hours to do in a season. So yeah, it was just cool to see him reunited with his two old pals and you get to, you get to hear a reference to another old next gen person or uh, uh, persona that we don't see, which is Data's cat Spot gets mentioned by Elnor at some point. Wait, wait, Elnor mentioned Spot? Yeah, yeah, he mentioned Spot. Oh, who yeah. Worf oh. took ownership of. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you hear? I don't know if it, I don't know if it's in the book or something, but they were saying. I don't know if he's still there or not, but like when Picard left the Enterprise and like Riker retired and since Data was dead, I guess Worf became captain of the Enterprise. Oh, yeah. Wow. I think that uh, I feel like maybe I'd, I had heard that. Maybe it's in a 
in a book or something. Yeah, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's in the prequel or, book or the comics or something, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, with the, you know Riker and Picard retired and Data dead, yeah, Worf. It was Captain Worf. Yeah, or maybe it got mentioned in 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 Deep Space Nine or something, or there was like a crossover because I definitely remember Worf being at the uh, the captain's seat at, at some point. That's I, cool. I think it might have been yeah, after the Deep, Deep Space Nine, but yeah, I think at some point, yeah, they, uh, yeah, yeah. Huh. Although that's, although I don't know. I mean, I don't know. After the finale, I don't know the state of the Enterprise because we didn't get the Enterprise. Oh yeah, true. But uh, but so yeah, so after uh, yeah, after Picard uh, gets some advice from Riker and Troy, and you know that whole visit, yeah, uh, they eventually f- him and his crew find the planet of the synthetics, and uh, you know, Brent Spiner. Every series I he's in, I swear Brent Spiner has to play at least two people. Yeah. That's just what he does. He's either him and, and uh, uh, his brother or as the creator, which kind of gives him a little bit more uh, flesh, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, and then, well, in episode nine, we meet, uh, oh, I forget the name, but it's uh, Dr. Soong's uh, son. And before 10 hit at first, I was like, oh, no, is this going to be like lore or something, you know, like disguising himself somehow? But no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they meet, oh, what was the name of the character? Because they meet another, I mean, she looks more android-like, but it's uh, another double for Soji. Oh, right, yeah. So I think that's in uh, episode 9. Yeah, 9 and 10, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, okay, so I think we were, uh, I was wrong. I didn't see it on on, on screen, but in the book, the, the start, the, Picard book, the prequel book, The Last Best Hope. Yes. That's when they flesh out that Worf was captain. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, ScreenRant.com. I gotta get that book. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean Episode nine, uh, they capture So that what? I was just gonna say, yeah, so that it, that was one of the ones where it seems like a standalone episode. You just went back to Riker, you got Troy uh, Troy in there. Little fan service, but it helps move the larger plot along. Fans are happy. We ended up getting a bonus, as we talked about earlier, because they come back in the finale. Riker comes back in the finale. Oh, I love that. I love and, that uh, part when he comes back in the awesome. finale. Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, because I mean, they, I mean, they, ca- they capture uh, the uh, what's the Romulus? Oh, uh, Ner- Nerak again. But mm. but then uh, but yes. then the, but then the synthetics lock up Picard because they're gonna like send a signal to call you know the whole thing the destroyer the whole thing the Romulans were uh, afraid of. Yep, the, what's in the prophecy or the, the mind melding, mm-hmm. and yeah, they do a little uh, a little bit of a, a bait a bait and switch because you think Soji who were she was a little bit cold to Picard for so long. But he, from this this dinner with uh, Riker and, and, and Troy, she sort of warms up to him and begins to trust him. Because, I mean, she met him under some pretty traumatic circumstances. He just kind of yeah. showed up and on the Borg cube and, like, walked through this portal with me. Let's get out of here. And, like, five minutes before that, she and, found uh, out she she didn't even know she was a, a synthetic until, like, five minutes before that even. So uh, Yeah. So that's kind of a lot to to handle mm-hmm. and it's not like he could fill her in on the ride because it's just boom they're there so yeah so, so we yeah. learned that the so, third yeah. sister or another sister made in that model yeah mm-hmm. but yeah they're going to open that portal so the whole Romulan fleet is coming or whatever mm. yeah and there's a lot of them oh what yeah they say, 219 something like that yeah 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 because yeah but you only have to worry about the first 109 but yeah, they they get reinforcements because yeah, that's when Raker shows up with a uh, a bunch of uh, similar looking ships. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, but I I love that. What movie. was it? it? It had like a the name of his ship was was the USS Jinyong, something like, like that. that. Let me see if I can find it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just love that whole scene. It's just like uh, he's like. You know, back. You know, telling the Romulan commander to back off. It's like, you know, what? I would just love to kick your Romulan ass or something. <laughs> yeah, you're treacherous, Romulan. Yeah, because because that he was talking to Commodore So, who were at this 
is in full Romulan gear at that point. We skipped over a cool part, or, or a little bit. We're kind of getting all over the place. We're all over the star map. But um, when, when we Seven of Nine comes back and has to uh, plug into the Borg cube as as uh, as they're being thrown out into space by the Romulans, who are essentially abandoning the reclamation project. That was a crazy moment with uh, all these half Borg, half recovered Borgs going through space, and then her going into the collective and uh, and hearing all the voices and directing them and saving who is left. And then after it was over, Elnor says, "So are you going to assimilate me now?" <laughs> I was kind of there's some good yeah. comedy moments that I appreciated throughout the run. But uh, oh. Uh... Yeah, the Riker ship was the Zheng He, Z H E N G H E. Yeah, they yeah they say it's the tough. He says it's the toughest, fastest, most powerful ship Starfleet has ever put in the service. Uh, the name. Yeah. This is all from news a Newsweek article. Uh, the name of the ship is uh, it was a, named after a 15th century Chinese diplomat and admiral who controlled a group of treasure ships known as the Starfleet. Ah. Mm-hmm. And See, I, they did put so much cool attention to detail. And yes. Like, and I think that, and it looks like maybe this ship has already, like, shown up in, like, one of the Star Trek, like, online games or something, so. Oh, okay. They'll probably buy a model, I'm sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I love this series. I just, I saw I saw some people giving this, I, I, I don't know if some people weren't, like, thrilled because it's not exactly next generation, but I loved it. I'm like, this, you know, this is, like, you know, next gen has matured and grown up a little bit, and yeah, and I, and I mentioned it earlier. I mean, people are always going to find little things that they could complain about, and I had some friends complaining that that it was they're like I was just bored at some point. It's like, well, it's one long story, and they're setting up a lot of information. We're meeting a ton of characters, yeah, and it's it can't all be. Like I mean, they set the bar high in terms of the unexpected amount of action that we we could get too. Uh, it's not going to be like that in, in every single one. And I thought the characters were good and they were developed pretty good. Like I, you know, you had you had strong feelings towards characters whether you liked them or you didn't like them, and and they kind of played with your your feelings. Like we were talking about with Agnes, you know, you couldn't believe what she did when she killed Maddox. And was maybe gonna kill Soji, and she sort of has this breakdown, almost commits suicide at one point. Um, but yeah, I love, I loved it too, and I, I'd like, you know, to, to I, I'm, I'm totally on board with where it's going from there. I'm gonna read the comic book. Maybe I'll read the book prior to this too, and I would definitely, definitely recommend it. I mean, look, it's not gonna, it's, it's not the same as no. Next Generation. It's made in 2020 with the availability we have. And yeah, like there are certain aspects of it that are a little bit different than what we saw, even in terms of just an acting style, like next gen DS9 and Voyager, because I was reading all those magazines today, the casting uh, people said that they like to, to cast people who are kind of classically trained. So they don't have accents. Cause this is all whatever, 24th century. Yeah. There's not a lot of slang and, and sarcasm and stuff. It's like some characters do talk a little bit like we do now, kind of modern sort of jokey stuff. So, I mean, maybe that's not what you're used to from watching like the, the Star Trek shows of, of the past, but it's good. It's not worth not liking because of little nitpicky things like that. They There's plenty of goodies and little hidden things for the diehards. And they wanted it to be appealing to people who might not be huge Star Trek fans, and they just kind of wanted to see something because they liked Professor X, so they liked uh, whatever other aspects of it that brought them to it. And yeah, overall, I, I would definitely give it an A. Probably an A would be the grade if I had to put a letter to it. Oh, see, I was about to ask you because I had an A in my mind too. So yeah, this is an A, people. I mean, this is it's a gr it's a great show. It's yeah. well written. It's I think it's got the right amount of uh, you know 
all the stuff you love from Next Gen and like we said, you know, seven oh nine from Voyager. But there's a lot of new stuff too. So I think it's a it's the perfect combination of old, older stuff and newer stuff. Yeah, they they definitely give a lot to uh, a lot of meat to chew on in terms of new characters, and it's okay. not just they're not just window dressing for your old favorites coming back. There, there's okay. some, some good stuff to dig into. And I mean, I was a little bit, I mean, now if you're listening to the CBS, all access is free for a month, but I was a, a little bit like bummed out that it would not just because I would have to pay for a subscription or whatever, which I'm fine with doing, mm-hmm. but I think that like, this could be, I think that people would still watch this if it was a TV show. Oh, yeah. But I don't know. Maybe network television has changed so much since it went off the air. But I feel like it would reach a bigger audience that way, obviously. But I mean, we are living in a streaming time, so it's not overly radical to watch it on a subscription-based service, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what the thing is. Like, you know, CBS could put this on TV, but yeah, they're saving it for this because, you know, they're like, oh, people love Star Trek. Let's get them to pay. But, you know. Mm-hmm. Again, our world, that's the way, our, you know, the way the world goes these days. <laughs> yeah. They really want to put those one F bump per episode in there to really justify it. But. That's right. All right. I mean, there's CBS. They could air it on TV if they wanted to. But yeah, yeah. we've said enough. We, we did break down every single little thing, but I feel like yeah. if you watched it now, for the rewatch, recommend it to a friend to check it out. And yes. I'll definitely watch it again. All right, so if you're listening to this on the podcast, this is part of Capes and, Capes and Lunatics 150, so we'll get to the rest of the episode right after this. If you're watching on YouTube, scroll down, Capes and Lunatics Capes and Lunatics episode 150 is a few uh, videos down from this, so check that out. All right, you'll hear, so you'll hear me after this if you're listening to this on the podcast. But Matt Kona, where can people find you? You can find me online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. My handle is at Matt Kona, M-A-T-T. K O N A. I do stand up comedy occasionally in my living room in this day and age. But I, I'm also in some others. I do the Quantum Zone with, with you, Phil, as you know, and with yes. Will Allred. Uh, I'm, I pop up here and there. There's a monthly comedy podcast called Backstage at the Naked Comedy Showcase that I'm on. And I'm around. I'm always up to chat. If you want to talk Star Trek, comic books, anything. I'm here. Say hello. All right. So, yes, everyone, again, on the podcast, the rest of the episode's coming. If not, if you're on YouTube, scroll down. Check out all of our uh, cool contents. Remember, social distance, stay inside, stay safe, and remember, boldly go. Make it so. Welcome to the Big Capes and Lunatics, episode 150. Of course, the usuals are here, Lilith and uh, Charlie and his new facial hair. Looks fake. Looks fake. Anyway, as we promised or threatened, we have Master Doom Robert Southgate with us. Hey, hey. And he brought his boyfriend with him. What did you call him? Master Doom. Master Doom. You know, not Doctor Doom. You know, he just has his masters. So. Yes. So he's Master Doom. He has the ego. I brought Beyond Doom with me. Let's not get into what I will like. What you two do in the privacy of your own recording booth is not our business. So I should say I brought Adjuster Doom. I'm not an adjuster. I don't Ge- work for an insurance company. Gecko so. Doom. <laughs> oh boy. Why are you wearing a hat a little? Why not? I just thought you were hiding something. Oh, Rob just wanted oh. to roast everyone today. Jeez. Oh, I'm full of it tonight. I've been in isolation. Chicago's been in lockdown. You know, so. you know the, pro- the problem is Rob wants to roast people on shows that, you know, don't really listen to him. So, you know, because there's <laughs> five downloads per his episodes. That's why he's joining your show, guys. That's <laughs> why he's here. You want somebody to actually listen to him. Very true. You know, they still let you go to 7-Eleven when you're on lockdown. So you can, like, go out. I wish I was on lockdown and... Uh, Unfortunately, I work well. Fortunately, unfortunately, I work in a place that makes ventilators. So, yeah, he's he really? is an essential personnel. Yep. So, I was well, gonna say if I, I, I get closed down, we're all in big, big trouble. Yeah. Yep. No, he is keeping people alive. I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing figures behind Rob. I'm seeing a lot of figures behind Lil a Lil. So I think a Lil. I think all ears are bigger, right? Yeah. I have <laughs> All of the Rob's essentials. Amazing, so. Of course, every one of Rob's. Of course, every one of Rob's is uh, 
drinking coffee. Drinking coffee. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Would you Would you like to see the coffee collection? Oops. All drinking coffee. There you go. There you go. I, do, I do need the Ron Swanson. That's about. You know that Ron Swanson's going for a lot of money now. Is it? Yeah. Not that one. He yeah. took it out of the box. The animal. Take your figures out of the box. I just. I've got can't. black You're too. Me, like palpitations. Why? You know behind you're you're the box collector. Yeah. Oh, she don't take anything out of the box. Yeah. I need. I need to display my stuff. I have everything <laughs> open. Well, they're all they're all statues now for the most part, but. Ever since Toy Story 2, when uh, Lilith learned that keeping them in the box turns them evil, Lilith has refused to take them out of the box. You don't, need, the, to you don't need, exactly. evil, you don't need an I evil need toy arm. I need an army to go with my armadillos, people. Hello. Yes. <laughs> when she, first she masters the armadillos, then she masters the evil toys, then she gets her own series from uh, Full Moon Video. I need it bigger. Oh, what a dream. That's Full Moon Video, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Rob, Rob's trying to get stuff on, you know, vivid. Um, <laughs> I am. I'm wearing the bathrobe tonight. That's why I said it, because I see your bathrobe with your shirt on and probably no pants. Probably? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's funny, speaking of no pants and speaking of, you know, essential employees, CNN actually had an article today that Walmart has seen an uptick in sales in shirts and tops. But they're selling less pants and bottoms. <laughs> oh, oh, for all the video chatting. Yeah. And, and yeah. That introduced the blur background. So, you know. <laughs> you, you can, yeah, if you want to, come around. You'll... There's been an uptick in mustache. Show you is wax Amazon. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yes, I was very disappointed. Uh, the, That's a coronavirus the, party hat. Really nice. Yes, the uh, groom. The groom I got is not as good as Clubman's mustache wax, but, you know, what are you going to do? That's the crisis, Charlie. What yeah. are you going to do? So what are we going to talk about, Phil? Uh, what are we going to talk I don't know. About? You surprised me. You were like, oh, I got a surprise. I got a special surprise guest. I didn't know you meant yeah, special got, like this. I got this. enough said so we could talk about Marvel. Okay. Uh, on that note, whatever, right. he says, it, everybody. Phil, whatever he says special surprise guest, don't it's you, get your hopes It's up. you or Chris. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's all right. Last time I had Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you know. Surprise, this guy sucks. Well, what's going on with Marvel? I mean, Black Widow's been delayed. Uh, what's going yeah. on with everybody, Phil? I know, I know. Okay, here's my here's my big question I've been asking everybody. Do you think, depending how long, are they, one, are they going to put Black Widow on Disney Plus if they can't release it in theaters? Or two, if they delay it long enough, is that going to delay Falcon and Winter Soldier? Does Black Widow have to come before Falcon and Winter Soldier? That's well, we don't know, think, Philip. We haven't written this shit stuff yet. I already <laughs> think Falcon and Winter Soldier is delayed because they can't get, they, they haven't finished filming. Well, the, 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 the Falcon and Winter Soldier is not supposed to be out till the end of August anyway, so. Well, right, but what I'm saying is they've, they've already, it's already going to be pushed out because mm. they've stopped. They've had a sh- yeah. shut down filming, so there's right, no it's way a good question. we're going to get this it is, to August. If this is going to last, do they have to get Black Widow out before they debut Falcon and Winter Soldier? That's what he's really asking, because if this thing is going to last, that's going to de- make them decide. Because I, I don't think they're going to push it to Disney+. Plus. I don't think they're going to do that with a Marvel movie. They're just not going to. No, they're, they're not going to do it with Wonder Woman. They're sure as heck not going to do it with Black Widow. I mean, the closest you're, you, you're going to see them doing is what they did with um, with Onward, where it was Where released. you can purchase video yeah, on it, it was, yeah, but, And that was already released in the theater. And yeah, even but that's, Onward, an hour is only getting two weeks on video on demand before it goes to Disney+. Plus. I don't, I don't think they would do that to Black Widow. Black yeah, Widow, they, they know either. Black Widow is a $500 million movie worldwide easily. Well, but there is the argument to be made that if they released it on demand. Yeah, where you can for charge like for on months, demand. Yeah. At, at $20, $30 a download, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, no, if, but, if they bump it up to twenty nine ninety nine, yeah, I think that's exactly. I think that's the price point that mm-hmm. would probably get it get it out. Yeah, so I could that's twenty, 20 bucks. That. That's less than two movie tickets, right? And they don't have to share that cut then with the theaters because they share a, a, a portion of the cut. Yeah. The theaters get get a portion. I think forty percent or thirty percent, depending on Disney. I know Disney negotiates those hard. It's probably less with Disney movies, but you know there, there's a good shot that if they did that, I mean whatever whatever platform Amazon or whoever does that would get a small percentage 
but they might get a bigger kickback at the end of the day. So, so then, so then the question becomes, do they average four tickets per person or three tickets per person? Because if it's three tickets per person and they're not losing the 30%, maybe it's worth putting it out at the $20, $20 price point, making essentially the same amount of money, but they know they're going to make that money. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there, that I, is a question. I mean, that's something you'd have to really analyze the business side of it. Like how many tickets on average do they sell to a family and what price point are they going in at? Are they going to Marcus for five dollars, or are they going in for full bore? Or, or do you do something where it's like, oh, hey, you know, you can pay f- what ten, fifteen bucks and rent it for a day or two, or pay the twenty five, thirty bucks and have it forever. You know, they no, could they, also they want to do to have even, it forever. Yeah, yeah, they don't. Want that. They could also do it as just a streaming pay per view. If those those. Those of you who remember pay for you, pay per view. <laughs> Do you not watch UFC? UFC and porn. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, much. but the idea that that it is going to, so it's going to be at eight at eight a.m. at nine a.m. at ten a.m. You know, they're going to be showing this film, and you can purchase your ticket to that showing and see it, and possibly even see it with various... Oh, there you go. They stream it. Yeah, they, I think that's a much more likely scenario. Yeah, they stream you know? it, you, they stream it, and you buy your digital ticket to be there, you know, watch it exactly. at that yeah, time. Going to okay. Disney+, Plus, that's not going to happen. Yeah. It's it's just not going to happen. Yeah, not, no. not for a Marvel movie. Unless they decide to add a pay-per-view option on Disney+. Plus. Nah. We're going to start tiering your Disney+. Plus. That's too much, especially as, as overworked as the internet probably is right now. <laughs> I no, think that would be a problem. You know what they're going to drop on Disney Plus? New Mutants. <laughs> As they should have. Yeah, I mean. Well, it, I don't think it, I think it ended up on Hulu before Disney Plus. So actually, I think, I think it's on something right now. It's New Mutants? Right. No. Are you no, sure? It was oh, not a... New Mutants. I'm sorry. Yeah. Dark Phoenix. I just saw was on like. Oh one yeah. Of them. It's 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 what I'm using it for toilet paper now that we're in a toilet paper crisis. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but you still bought I'm it. Sorry. Sophie Turner, don't listen to them. I still love you. It's fine. Not my Jean Grey, but fine. I still love you. I, it's not it's fine. Fine. It's, it's, it's coming from a DC apologist. You can love everybody who is Who apologizes for DC? I love He's talking about me. He <laughs> really hasn't listened DC to the show. Little yeah, Lilith is, a, Lilith is all Archie now. Yes. Yeah. Archie. Oh, Archie speaking of Archie, time. do you know what is on CBS All Access? Yeah, Archie Mysteries. I saw your Facebook post. Archie's Weird Mysteries. <laughs> Finish Picard! Awesome Finish show. Picard! Before you wander off. <laughs> oh, no. What I'm is sorry. Archie's Weird Mysteries? Sounds, you know, like, sounds like Archie's something Charlie Esser Mysteries. would like. Is it a new show, or is it like no, an old show that they brought back? Like the 70s. No, it's not from the 70s. It's from the, it's from the early 2000s. It, it's it's not something Charlie Esser like would like. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> no, it is not from the 70s, Lilith. <laughs> Archie's weird. The Archie's was from the seventies. The only thing from the seventies is that facial hair. Is it live action? No, 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 no. It's it's a cartoon, but it's basically sort of a X Files riff on on the Archie's, and you know, with paranormal activity going on at in the Archie's, and like the first episode is an invasion of the body snatchers kind of thing, and they'll eventually get. I, they eventually do have werewolves and vampires, if I recall correctly. So you watched fact, this before Twilight Zone and Picard. Of course. Of I think course. he's no, all over the actually, place. He's no, said he, he, he's, watch, he said he watched the first, first three episodes of Picard. It's like, come on, well, get through it. It's only first ten. Of Picard, and then I watched, you know, a couple more today. And I did watch the second episode of Twilight Zone, which was very good. Um I really liked that one. That was the rewind one. And yeah, and then actually I just I only watched two episodes of our Choose Weird Mysteries. I haven't been on CBS it's All Access. Only one season. I'm actually still working during the day when I'm when I'm at home, you know. Oh, oh Lil, you're not at home, right? Oh, yeah, I'm working from home. Okay, are you? Yeah. So what are you binging while you're working? I'm not binging anything. I'm working. I find that highly suspect. <laughs> Why? Be- because Rob's never had a full-time job. Come on. I know. Oh, ouch. <laughs> That's true. Hey, you bring it. You're going to get it back. Yes. Master uh, the doom. The true of the idle reach. Um... <laughs> Just so so it. not the case. But uh no, Archie's Weird Mysteries. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. There's a lot of good stuff there, you know. Uh I saw the first couple of episodes of Bob Hart's Abishola, which I find a very funny TV show. You can fight me nerds on that. Um It's like he's speaking another language. 
Well, I I got CBS and got I looked deep, at stuff. I would like cut, CBS. Tom, got deep cut. That's awesome. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. No, but that Bob loves Abishola. That's on regular CBS. You can get that on TV. Oh, yeah, I don't even yeah, know I, what that is. It's oh, the new uh, comedy what's his... with the uh, the the big guy. I forgot what other show he's been on. Um, oh, it's um, not Kevin James, is it? That guy sucks. No. It's, You're just jealous not, that not, Kevin James Kevin has life. No, the other. Yeah. Don't, don't be insulting Adam Sandler's newest friend. Ugh. Yeah. So Ugh. It, it's, uh, is it the rest? No, I, don't, I forget what his name he's is. He's been on a lot of TV It's shows. the other fat guy. Uh, yeah. he's, oh, he's, he's one of the other fat, fat comedians. And he did have a guy series. from Mike and Molly. That's who it yeah. is. It's Mike. It's Mike from Mike and Molly. Okay, I saw that he was on another show. Yeah, and now he's with. Uh, what is it now? He has I don't a... know if the actress is Nigerian, but she plays a Nigerian uh, nurse, and they sort of have a a cute relationship that sort of evolves. So basically, sort of... so basically, he just has a mustache. And he's with a different woman. <laughs> yeah, basically. pretty much. Yeah. Well, no, it's also he actually has a very different job. It, there's a lot of interesting aspects of the story. I'm enjoying it. That's all I'm saying. It's a nice, it's a nice it's a, sitcom. It's it's a sitcom Not that is a prequel to, to the Jeffersons. They're actually the Willises that live next door, <laughs> and Lenny Kravitz is their son. Okay. Yes. Uh, also, Come on, so you know that that sound, w- Willis, yeah. uh, her son is Lenny Kravitz, right? Yes. Must In real life. My medicine yes. soon. We, we've actually talked about this very often. Uh, oh, you have? <laughs> yeah. We've, it's Lenny Kravitz related. Of course we talked about it. Um, Ron, what's that red action figure behind you? Oh, I'm uh, sorry. That's my cat. Has yeah. a, uh, never mind. Uh, that's Daredevil. That's what, Daredevil. What kind of Daredevil? I think the Marvel Legends Daredevil? Probably made Daredevil figures. I don't know what's that. Oh, look at that. It's oh, a Secret a Wars t- Daredevil. That's the, I don't think so. I think it's a Toy Biz Daredevil. <laughs> Which is it? Is it Toy, Toy Biz. Biz or Secret Wars? Toy Biz. Oh, yeah. okay. Toy Biz. You can't get it on me. I got, I got, I got impacted Secret Wars figures hanging in my hallway. Well, there you go. So, well, oh, Alil's got more toys figures. than an adult shop. Don't test them. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. More toys than video games. If you ever want, to, if you ever need to be stranded or quarantined, this is the place. Nice. Uh, if I ever hooked mine right. up, this would be the place. Actually, no. We're in quarantine. Stay away. I don't want it. Yeah, I don't want to go there. You guys, you've been there. Rob and Charlie with those Corona catchers on their face. <laughs> I don't think that's actually true. That was a what old, that we grew discussion. Corona catchers. No, no, no. That that, it that having a beard increases. What about a little? Mine. I cut my. It's a baby Corona catcher. <laughs> exactly. I cut mine short. No, it's yeah. But there's there's um something out there that says that facial hair can. Increase your likelihood of getting if the. If it corona. catches crumbs, it probably catches corona. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, if it catches it, then it prevents There's a lot of things that in. catch crumbs. What, what about back here? <laughs> I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> but um, anyway, but yeah, no, I had a whole conversation with Tristan because that's why I, that's why I did shave a lot of it off because Tristan was worried about me, but he did not want me to shave off my because I was going to do, do the full. Uh, the full Monty? Luthor for this, yeah. The full <laughs> Luthor the second for this. hour, but no. Show. But Tristan wanted me to keep it, so I'm not doing the full Mon- the full uh, Luthor yet. So, so do I need a no, bikini okay, wax Tristan. now? Is that what you're telling me? Because I can what? get Corona. I need a bikini wax because I can get Corona. I get it. Uh, um, Rob, come over. I get it. I, I can't. I can't have Corona. Hold on, let me go heat up my honey. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> this is a family show. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I, Charlie, I, I didn't say it. Your hat and put a hat on. You could be a lil. Is that a medical Whoa. term? <laughs> it is. Oh yeah, we're we're all anyway. we're big on the medical terms here. Okay. So, Dog is a medical there's, term. There's, so, so, well, uh, if you're so shield. bad, <laughs> is, is that ever coming back? What? Yeah. Isn't is there supposed to be one last season? Yeah, this summer. Yeah. This summer. Well, okay. Agents of Shield, well, yeah. Filmed it already, so you, you know what's really Well, what's really ridiculous is I haven't watched it since I saw the first couple episodes when they went into space. Mm. I just haven't had Which time. Which time? Um, <laughs> Which time? The first yeah, time. I, I, you know what? Wait multiple times? I yeah. the, it was the second time. It was the time when they went to the future, I guess. Okay, yeah, so that's... So I haven't seen it since then. Rob's like, and actually, speaking of, of, of what's going to influence what, I'm wondering if the last season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to have an effect on Loki. Why would that be? Because we've 
because they're time well, travel. They're time. They're going to yeah, be time they, traveling in the last season. They're rewriting history. They keep on. They're basically. They're basically what what the Avengers was doing in that first in in the last Avengers movie where they keep on creating all these alternate timelines. Right. Agents of Shield was doing that first. Right. 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 Yeah. Because, and and yeah. actually, I, I've heard. I mean. God only knows at this point, but that they were going to, we were going to get a surprise in the final season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that it is another timeline, that it is tied in. It's just not tied in the way that you thought, because that's why we had Nick Fury and we had Lady Sif in that first season. Yes. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that and where it falls in the overall timeline. And we may find out that actually the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are in the timeline where Loki runs off with the Tesseract. Oh, that'd be awesome. And it'd Which be really awesome if Tobey Maguire came swinging in as Spider-Man. It, there's a lot of things they could do. Break his hip. And given that it's going it's to going have to? this time travel Sam has got Doctor Strange now. Oh, he does? Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's that's confirmed. It's Hello? rumored. It's confirmed. Me and Sam are like this. <laughs> you know what? Okay. Arthritis? There's one thing you can do to shut Charlie down. Mark my words. Oh! You can't that's say anything thing. about that. That's your thing. No. Yeah, it's my and thing, and I'm right, what, 95% of the time? Really? I get so much right. I yeah, am so much I, more right I than I am wrong. Every possible, every if possible you say thing, enough things, yeah. Oh! Well, we'll be right, you know. But, um, I, I would, I would, I would go back and look at my history, and you will find out I am right so much more often than I'm wrong. Entirely possible. Yep. But it's not really possible. Mark my words, it is possible. I don't know yep. why they did... an infinite universe with infinite uh timelines, yes, it is entirely possible. I don't yes. know why they just don't release Agents of Shield already, because it's already it's already all filmed. They should just release well, it early. It, Everyone's because home. it may in fact have spoilers for other things. That's that's sort of where essentially this that which gets to our central question here is is this issue that we're dealing with right now with uh, the delays in the release schedule is that going to cause problems for other shows that they have in the pipeline? So, if the end of Agents of Shield is going to have references, and for what it's worth, if it's meant to come in between Winter Soldier and um, Black Widow, and they're going back in time, and no doubt there's going to be some Agent Carter crossover, and maybe there's going to be a Agent Carter brought to the future kind of concept in this whole thing. You know, to the future, to the past, to the back, to the forth, and all the different timelines that they create. Is that going to be an issue for stuff that they're already planning on releasing? Mark my so, word. Yeah, mark my word. You tell them, Luca. So mark my that word. gets to be an issue. Can they can they have Agents of Shield come out early if stuff they're going to release later need needed that to come after? You know? I, I I don't think they care about Agents of Shield enough to worry about what it does yeah i I agree Um, with that although it it could be i don't think it would have any effect on what they do cinematically but it might they might want to pump it out there because of the disney plus stuff they might and and what i'm going to tell you is i would i don't think if they didn't care about agents of shield they wouldn't be renewing it that you know because they had lots of places where they could have just ended the whole thing they didn't need to keep on going they kept on going because someone at Disney really likes something about it. And I actually think Kevin Feige kind of wanted it back for himself. I think there was this thing where he well, he's got it, it now. Would, exactly. Well, the, and he got it now at the last season. So I get the feeling whatever is going to happen with it is going to be important. What about that because, rumor that, that uh, we're going to see Charlie Cox in, what is it, in the new Spider-Man? Spider-Man, Spider-Man. 3, yeah. Well, there's. It's not. I don't even know if it's going to be Charlie Cox. I. I. It, it's Marvel lawyer. Oh, see, be, I heard it was it Charlie Cox. Cox. It could be. We don't know anything. For Kevin sure. Smith. Kevin Smith throwing yeah. out rumors. Yeah. Well, you know the the statement is is that people at Marvel really like Charlie Cox. So, at that is what that is. I'm avoiding so. the joke, a little. <laughs> Just give me credit right, for avoiding that joke. Is this this is a family show, right? Yep. Per, per, per no Rob's giggling. orders, and he's like, oh, 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 yes. pat me on the back for not breaking my own rule. Well, yeah, my rules. Who's <laughs> got the sound effects? <laughs> anyway, and yeah, that was just... Phil. Andy has a soundboard. Yes. 
Uh, you, 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 you know, Rob, if you have to call attention to the joke, it's probably not that funny. Oh! <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Oh, You're going to go, uh, uh, Charlie that's, Cox, ah, ah, they that's like Rob's Charlie Cox, ah, ah. No, hey, you get it? He's you he's mas- it? he's master doom, not subtle doom. Okay. Yeah, subtle doom. <laughs> yeah. All right, I all right, inevitable. all right. Let, let's bring Lilf into this. Uh, what's everyone think of what they've seen so far of the Batman? Have we we've seen, seen pictures, and we saw him fall off his bike. That was a stunt man. We saw his muscle it. car. We saw the bat coop. That was cool. Yeah, I like the bat coop. Um, I think it's going to be cool. I don't like the, I don't like the gun logo. I think the guns logo is stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. Yeah, but have they confirmed uh, that's guns? I mean, it's metal, but is that? I mean, it looks yeah, like it. I, but... I actually think that's a battering. I think it's like it's like he takes it off and it's a battering. So they're stealing from Spider-Man: Homecoming, where the where. Or they're, so they're stealing from Superman. His drone comes out. Or where they're he steal- rips off his logo and it becomes a net. Or they're stealing from <laughs> the, the short- big cellophane thing that. Ah, oh, yes. Them and then they fall into the pit. And, oh yeah. my god, Murder it's so bad. Murders. Yeah, he's gonna kiss Catwoman. So make- he's gonna I kiss really Catwoman. Make her forget. So I was gonna yeah. say Scott's still watching it right now, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Director's cut. <laughs> the Donner cut. So Lilith, what do you think of the Batman? It couldn't be worse than Schumacher, so you know. Amen. Nobody could it. That is a low. No, it, that that's the lowest water. bar that I have. No, and, so. no nipples. And to be fair, thirty-year-old uh, Robin. To be fair, Lilith. I mean, you know, before Josh Trank's Fantastic Four film came out, people said similar things about wait, that. Wait, so you know. Wait, wait. I thought there was no bar so yeah. low. I thought that we did. Conrad I, cannot limbo under it. I thought we did the mind wipe on that Fantastic Four movie. That didn't happen. <laughs> If you if you oh, stack we will never up, forget. There are some if you stack up that, that Fantastic must, must Four against the Schumacher Batman, oh, the Fantastic sure. Four at least the first half of the movie was watchable. Second half is such Gosh, garbage Shank. that it just Fantastic Four. The the first half was watchable. There is nothing watchable in the Schumacher Batman. Tyler, I would, I have a word with you. Somebody get Tyler on the phone. Yeah, I would not. Uh, I would not. I would actually say the Schumacher, and we're talking about Batman and Robin here, right? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. But, but I Batman say, Forever was Schumacher, too. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the one with Val Kilmer was, too. was Schumacher, Batman too. Yeah. Batman, Forever, Batman Forever wasn't as bad as Fantastic Four. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I would say... Batman and Robin, you could argue, but not Batman. Yeah, Batman Forever was better. I would say that... I'm going to go out there. I'm going to say that there is a lovable nonsense to the Schumacher Batmans uh, that makes it much more watchable than Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. I don't think I could watch Josh Trank's Fantastic Four again. I could easily watch Batman and Robin again. Okay. If you go by that scale, I'm with you. You know, it's like, I could watch it. It's like, you know, I could make fun of it. I could riff on it. It's, It's silly. And what I'll say about Batman and Robin is it knows how ridiculous it is. So right. at least they're in on each other. Yeah, exactly. Um, holy rusted metal, Batman. Oh. It's it's, oh. it's very cognizant of what it's doing, and in that sense, I can watch those those Schumacher Batmans and say, okay, you know, they're no Superman three, obviously, but they're watchable. He loves <laughs> Superman three for some. Yeah, un- Superman three is not bad. Superman four, the quest for hey, peace. Shut is high. your mouth. Get off your no, Superman no, four. No, Superman no, four. No, Superman no, four is no, horrible as it is. Is better than three. Well, the only good, the only redeeming thing in we three. We just got is, done talking about how the bad Superman, Superman was. Awesome. The the uh, oh, flicking peanuts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's, that was awesome. That that and the junkyard fight are the only redeeming things of exactly. Superman three. Uh, also, uh, the first introduction of Kryptonite that makes you morally weak. I think that is immensely uh, viable. Also, the introduction of a of a villain who has money as their superpower. That is an amazing thing that they add to it. But they, they had that it's amazing. Monster. They really didn't do it before that. Really. I don't think. Um, it was very provocative because we were in that era of greed and yeah. I, I get where Charlie's coming from. <laughs> and really so, yeah. Awesome. And, and then, you know, Gus Gorman uh, by Richard Pryor is just amazing. Everything everything Gus Gorman does in that is just really, 
it's just a great use of 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 Richard Pryor as a as an actor and a character in it. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot to sell for it. You know, Richard Pryor is in a different movie in that movie. <laughs> Well, if Richard you Pryor's take his scenes movie. out of it, it is a completely different film. He's doing well, something. He's not even film, there. Obviously, it huh? he, well, it wouldn't be as good of a film without him. He, he, Hello, he brings he brings a special sauce, and that's good. Yeah, but he's yeah. phrasing. It's like two movies. Well, it's not two movies. He's a part of that. Mo- uh, anyway, that's okay, Rob. And it's fine. <laughs> All I'm saying is, it's better than Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. Josh Trank's Fantastic Four is literally unwatchable. Yeah, the second it, half is absolutely unwatchable. Yeah. But you don't get to watch movies in, 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 in half segments, you know? <laughs> I do. I fall asleep. Okay, well, then, All the go. time. You can you know, be serious so, without you know, so, so, you know, why is Jell-O is a happy film, you know? <laughs> Don't get, it's like, don't, oh, it's a pointed dog. It's a great film. Don't get Charlie started on Superman 3. My knockers are fully frosted. Yes, well, I do have frosted knockers. Um, you can be serious without your pants on. You can. Rob Kimberly! Rob That's going to be the it's hardest fun. thing about Come this. Come on, Lilith. What am I serious? Whole, about the end of the whole lockdown situation is returning to the tyranny of pants. <sighs> um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I'll be honest with you. Well, you need to drop in whenever Charlie talks of Homer yelling, no more pants. (laughs) Don't you hate pants? I mean, you could wear a muumuu like Homer did. Uh, No. Oh, yeah. With a cape. Just just call (laughs) Toga. Charlie asked for Toga. Yeah, I mean, if I could get away with a business kilt, I would, but, you know. (laughs) Business muumuu? No, business kilt. (laughs) Well, you you would get away with a business kilt if you could, but there are restrictions on it now. Ever since that incident, Charlie. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, my thing. Thing. I have no idea anymore. It's it's like supposed to be. It's Rob. It's like oh, it's Southgate Media is a family friendly thing until Rob comes on, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> look at my butt. <laughs> maybe maybe just because for once in my life now I'm sober on a, on a broadcast. Maybe I'm just saying, man. Maybe you guys shouldn't drink so much while you're doing these shows. <laughs> They're called edibles, Charlie. Supposed to give my medicine soon. Fair enough. Keep talking about them. <sighs> People, I you know, dried kiwi fruit and uh, kale. Am I supposed to give my medicine soon? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, uh, the so is there any? Are, are there any superhero TV shows coming up or any, any comic TV shows Star coming up that you guys are excited? Out, well, so we got what is? That. Star Girl. Yeah, yeah. Disney Star Girl is that? already out. I, I don't know what that is. There's one on D- it's not Disney Plus. Uh, Disney Plus. It's, yeah. it's a movie. It's not superhero, though. It's not superhero. But Char- Charlie just thinks they're digging at DC by just naming a movie Star Girl. Because <laughs> they, they put out a, a film that, that right now, if you Google Star Girl. It's gonna take you to Disney Plus. <laughs> so and everyone looking for Star Girl is gonna just nobody because wants to use the DC app. It's garbage. Your your search history, you know, you might get that, but mine will go to DC. I'll just put you that. Oh, well, you don't want to look at your <laughs> search history, Lil Hellfire. <laughs> um, not on my main computer. My main computer is fine. You gotta have a jack. Oh. Everybody knows that though. If it's twenty twenty, anyway. a what? Anyway. What's a jack top? There was Russian servers. Out of the gooch. Out of the gooch. H. Okay. Anyway. What? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> There's a drop. That's typical hey. for you, Alil. China is she hulk She hulk What? Isn't China dead? Yeah, but, yeah, really but she did do. She, she did do a porn parody as she hulk Yes. <laughs> oh, she did. Yes, and. uh... What's so rate that movie for us, Charlie. Since oh, I've never seen the Where film. Does I've fall <laughs> compared to Superman three and Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. Well, again, it's going to be better than Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. <laughs> the cinematography. In, in that it's going to be better than Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. Um, uh, yeah, more of a plot. Josh Trank's Fantastic Four it was like a found fil- footage film that nobody wanted to find. The porn parody had uh, more of a plot than Fantastic Four. Yeah. Well. Say porn on a children's. Uh... It's not a oh, children's. It's just it a is... children's show. 
<laughs> it's a PG ship. Really, it's what, what, is, he, allowed what to does he think? This is Mr. Southgate's neighborhood or something? That's all. We, we are allowed that's to what use he does to himself. Oh, that's what the guy's robe. He's, he's gonna put his shoes on, take them off. Yeah, he's gonna invite people over. Anyway, when's the last time Rob? What's the last time Rob wore shoes? I'm like the geek Hugh Hefner, only Lil and Charlie are my bunnies. It's disgusting. (laughs) You wish I was one of your bunnies. You're one of my bunnies. You wish. Look at the rack. Look at the the rack on both of them. Milkshake, my friend. You can't deal with milkshake. Should we we talk about Lil's love of me? Should we make this public again? I thought it already was. It's not. It's known. It's fine. It's known. known. See you, Lil. You're cheating on Chris. Are you cheating on Chris? Rob's cheating on Chris. Anyway. um, Thank you. You can move on. So, so, uh, I was going to say, is anyone anyone else watching I'm Not Okay With This? Which is based on a comic book. Oh, it is. I didn't know that. Yes, it is. The previews look good. Yeah, well, this is the new show that Full Stream Ahead is reviewing. And our He's learning how to drop plugs. Get on him. Yeah, well, well done, no, but Charlie. it is a delightful show. Well, it took him five years. Um, amazingly well acted and so well written. I mean, you know, and really approaches this idea of so, sort of takes the idea of realism in a comic book to a really interesting place and level that isn't, you know, realism in a comic book where things are just, you know, oh crazy and people die but more like people are kind of like just awkward and dealing with stuff in a very unique way without also being it's delightful i don't want to give away too much you should definitely be watching it on netflix it is it's and what i love about it is all the episodes are only like 22 minutes long so they're like an actual short tv show like they wrote it for 22 minutes and these guys are really good at that which is really impressive and it's only seven episodes so it's really a perfect little binge. You so know? is it based on an indie comic? Yeah, apparently it is. Because, um, like, did you guys watch End of the Effing World? Yeah, of course. What a great show. You know, that's based on a comic, like, a, it was based on a zine. Yeah. Which is also really interesting and cool. They yeah. took some liberties, but it was still a pretty cool story. The way. Well, have you ever read the zine? Of course they took yeah. some liberties. That was They had to. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of it was like, disjointed and weird. Full frontal but... nudity, but you know. Well, there you go. Well, I mean, favorite. for all these things, it's it is just the, you know, as we've said, that so much now of culture and television, the comics are sort of the minor leagues of what becomes films and television now. Right. That stuff that was done in that graphic media now is getting translated because people first off it's a visual storytelling to start with so it's much easier to adapt from a from a comic style format to a television show or a movie and you know there's just so much media out there Charlie had a stroke and, what I'm, am i not you froze you for know, a second or two and rob said you had a stroke oh well, you guys freeze freeze on me all the time so yeah it's our fault. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know whose fault it is. I just know that things freeze. I know the internet is not a perfect stream, unlike ahead. full stream ahead. Oh, another plug! Look at him go! That's my boy. You taught me. Now so, teaching yeah, Charlie. The, the last two episodes, I've been like plugging the little Amazon link and Arr, people to buy I know Pod Life the book. You know, yeah, everybody buy three copies. By two you for get your a book. We one s- for your you get a book. Everyone Look, buy everyone buy everyone buy Pod Life the book. It. Help help support Rob Southgate's a lifestyle of no pants. It'll be yes. worth more if you keep it in its Amazon box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can do unboxing so, videos. Yeah. Good, so uh, good I, I was actually thinking about what you were saying, Charlie. Um, and I was I had a uh, a memory. Uh, back in, I want to say 89, maybe 90, uh, we did a zine. Martha and I did a zine. It was called Disgraceland. It was actually originally called the Dead Elvis Fan Club, but the uh, Elvis Presley Enterprise has sent us a, a cease and desist letter. So uh, the men in white polyester came for us and said, no more. So we changed it to Disgraceland. So we got a table at the 20th annual Chicago Comic Con. This is before it was Wizard World, before any of that other stuff, right? 
What was that? Yes, we were actually, if you looked in, man, I can't remember what the comic, there was a, like a, a newspaper for comics. Do you guys remember I don't this? know what a zine is. Oh, oh um. Rob keeps uh, talking about a zine. Spider I don't know what a zine is. Or... Ah, I hate you a little. Comic Shop News. There were actually a couple 11. different newspapers for comics that I recall in the 80s. Yeah, oh. it, was like a, it was like a magazine, but it was on newsprint. It was larger. It was like the, the yeah, something. I, I, but yeah, they, they did a huge full page spread advertisement for Guests of Honor, and Martha and I were listed as Guests of Honor. We were told the three most requested interviews that year were us, Stan Lee, and Chris Claremont. <laughs> so where is the zine now, Rob? So no, wait. No, wait. It's, well, it was on my wall. Uh, but wait, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is we got this booth in Artist Alley and we were the sitting there. The point of the story was you were name dropping. Who no, no, with. no. It was just really funny. We never, we never got to see any of them. But we were sitting in Artist Alley with these other uh, people that had zines and had, you know, mini comics and like guys that used to do comics in like 60s and 70s that were like, you know, comics with an X, those guys. And, uh, the big buzz was that there were producers walking around looking for properties because at that time they weren't pulling from the comics industry. And this was when right at the dawn of that, this was the first like summer, I guess they had been at some other con in LA and bought up a couple of properties. Now they were in Chicago at the big con and they were looking for indie things, not Marvel and DC and dark horse, but indie stuff that they could pull from. I have a second part to that story. So, uh, oh, I have a third part to that story. So, you know who approached us was Barry Gordy Jr. Oh, wow. So he had just started Motown Comics, and he brought Coolio with him to play at the Comic-Con at, like, an after party. And what's funny about that is we, what, we, to promote our thing, I had a skull mask and Elvis glasses, and I put on a suit, and I just walked around the con. So I was dead Elvis, and so many people reacted to this character. When I came back, Barry Gordy Jr.'s wife came up, and she was like, hey, man, that's really cool. I really like your stuff. She was looking at our, our stuff, and uh, they started like saying, well, maybe we could have dead Elvis come out when Coolio performs tonight. So I almost performed with Coolio, which would have been crazy. That would have been a fantastic voyage. But the <laughs> other part of the story Get it. I, I don't know if they have too white for that joke. <laughs> I get it. That's why I'm trying to figure out what year this is because Fantastic Voyage wasn't in 90. Okay, what year was it? I Coolio believe it just off the top of my head it was 94, 93, 94. A little, no, a little. The all timers is set in. You see them every two seconds. Martha, what year was that? Maybe Martha, it was 91 what year? or 92. I don't remember. Whatever the 20th anniversary oh. Comic Con was. What? See, look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When was no. that? The real brains behind the top. When was that? When was that? When was that, mother? It might not have been Fantastic Voyage. It might have been one of the. It was Coolio. 93? Uh, yeah. All right. Oh, there's an album called Fantastic Voyage. His, his song. His big song was Fantastic Voyage. Before Gangster Paradise was Fantastic Voyage. Oh, yeah. oh are, yep. we okay. the, are we talking about the. I don't know. Are we talking about the hip hops? I don't know. The other part of it. That's. I think when I hear Fantastic Voyage. So, did it corner to us? How, was how it table Coolio with some, Uber out here? With ah. some improv actors that had a comic book out. And I had been an improv actor at that point. So I got talking with these guys, and they were like, oh, wow, you're in Chicago doing it. We're up from Milwaukee. And wow, what's it like here? And they had a comic book called Scud, the Disposable Superhero. Pretty clever book. It was really cool. What he, what this guy would do is, is he'd get an arm shot off, and he there were vending machines that had the body parts. He'd go up and buy a new arm and put it on, and that's how he did it. But that's not the important part. So we talked to these guys. We get along and everything. Like, oh, we should do something together and blah, 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 blah. Cut to a few years ago. We're watching Community, and the name Rob Schraub comes up as director. And I'm like, wait a minute. Rob Schraub was one of those two guys. And then I remember... Dan Harmon was the other guy. Oh. So a brush with greatness. They had a Rick and Morty and in. Thank you, Rob. Those two and guys. Yeah, but instead of... What is slumming with us, Rob? That's the I question. Made friends, what I made bad friends choices with the guy, did you make in your life? This guy that, that had a zine that went nowhere, but it was so funny. Uh, and I can't remember his name, so that's a pointless story. But I didn't make friends with Dan Harmon and, and Rob Schraub. I made friends with this other guy who had a really funny comic. So, <laughs> so next time, find the people who aren't as funny 
Because they're so they going to steal stuff from other people. And they were out there looking for properties. Sense. They found Dan Harmon and Rob Schraub. And Martha and I were kicked to the curb. Um, oh, well. Yep. Sorry about that. But now you own your entire media empire. So <laughs> there we go. It all evens out. Does everything is fl- everything you, you see behind him is his. It's like, you know, it's, what is the what what is the positive spin on this? Like, oh, you know, I almost, it's, you know, he doesn't have to wear pants it. to work. Yes, well, hey, that's true. the dream. So true. Is that the dream? <laughs> it's your dream. <laughs> it's <Charlie's out>. dream. <laughs> I, Your dream I, I, is not only that you don't have to wear pants, but that I'm not wearing pants, and you have achieved that dream. Let's go back to when I, League of Geeks, they did this thing. It was called, uh, what was that? Stuff We Love from the Week or whatever. And oh. Alil, like, got weepy. He was talking about how much he loved me. <gasps> did, he pull Kevin, did he pull Kevin? Did he pull Kevin Smith? I your name. I just said, because I was the only one at that time on my show that liked Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I said I listen to this Agents of Shield podcast and I enjoy them. I think that was the only thing I ever said. And Steve went, "Oh my god, he's talking about Rob again. What is with and, this and, Rob and, guy?" And both Will? my co-hosts said Agents of Shield sucks, and we moved on. I'm gonna find that clip. You I'm have a good time. Find Did he pull clip. Kevin Smith? I love Rob Southgate. <laughs> Never gonna find that clip. That clip does not exist. Yep. Although was sitting there with his papers out, adjusting some insurance claims and loving on me. <laughs> oh, and don't you laugh, Charlie. That's how I, we got you, too. I I was a very big fan of, uh, I don't know how. of the original Nuff said. <laughs> I made one mistake in my life. <laughs> I don't know how Charlie was a Charlie fan. Charlie was like, we I look everything wrong. Charlie said, these bozos can do it. I can do it. Char- Charlie's, <laughs> like, Charlie's, exactly like, it. Charlie's like, I love Rob and that guy who eats the Frosties every episode. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, if, if, if I recall, my main thing was I was, you know, their, their, their complete lack of knowledge of comic history and lore just oh! me, so I was to correct them. Oh. Like, well, no, actually, what happened was... That's 100% accurate. And, well, and then Rob was like, yeah, this guy Charlie keeps on running it. I think we're going to have him do something with us because he's Burn. just... Burn. And really what it was was just, you know, they're, I they were just anything, it was, so it was bad Jack about Marvel Comics that lore that... that should be in the Avengers. I think that's <laughs> really what did. He kept saying it. I go, yeah, she's DC. And he's like, I don't care. Yes. Catwoman should be there. He's a very big fan of the... Of the, um, of the Halle Berry. Of the Halle Berry. And I would say oh, she's oh Storm and it's like... God. He didn't care about Storm. No. It was all about Catwoman. Yeah, he watched well, it with the sound off. It, and I'd it's... say, did you like the movie? Because it's terrible. He was like, oh, I, there's a movie? I, like... I mean, he didn't care. <laughs> there's sound? I don't know. <laughs> he saw a poster. Well, you know, that was probably one of the best things about that film. So, And if I remember right, Lilith brought Phil in. Because wasn't Phil like? A cyber stalker of yours, Lilith? Well, no, 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 no. Tell your story how you want to tell it, Phil. We don't have a creep. We don't have a creep. We don't have a. We don't have a creepy man. We don't have a creepy. Well, you, I, I started listening to the Arrow podcast you were doing, and I, and you were on on Twitter and saying you were looking for guests to be on. So my very first one was with you, and then I think we did a second one, and then I was like, oh, this is great, and then. I'll never forgive you. You pointed me at to Zach, and I was just, you know. <laughs> and, I don't think she pointed you at Zach. I think I did. I think that she pointed you. No, at No, no, she pointed me to Zach because she goes, "I know someone yeah, who's looking for some for somebody for, for a flash." Because remember the oh, remember be perfect. You might mellow him out. Remember the oh. story. Remember the story. Yeah, yeah. Because we were gonna do the. Uh, we we're gonna talk about Flash, and then we added Arrow, and then like. I'm talking to it's Zach, and, and then all of a sudden, yeah, then all of a sudden, this this Rob guy comes on, and he's like, "Oh, hey guys, why don't you do this on the show?" And I'm like, "Who the hell is this Rob guy?" <laughs> and which, then, which and, is something you guys say regularly, and then, I'm sure. And then after a couple, we- and then after a couple weeks, Rob was like, "Oh, hey, I see you like Batman. Would you like to do? Uh, you know, Gotham's coming out. There you go, Rob. You're, you're welcome." Thank you, Phil. Thank you. He's like, yeah, hey, people. <laughs> he's like, you want to do a show about Gotham? <laughs> Phil, Phil said it in his special way, and I was like, oh, please let him do this show. Yeah, but I will say this much. I loved doing the all-new Marvel Roundup with Phil. Yeah. Phil, me, and Parrish. And super, that was, and super connectivity, which is still around. We just stopped. Uh, 
We just did episode 282 right before this show. Did you? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love both of those shows. So, yeah. yes. And, uh, yeah, that was great. And Phil and I had a show together. Yeah, until he abandoned me. You were still breathing, so I assumed you were okay, Tristan. Yeah, I did abandon you. <laughs> Here's my trophy. I can hear your head. I can hear you saying, ow, ow, ow. But you're still, pre- you're you're still breathing, so show. I assume Just... you're okay. There's my drop. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, me and Rob did a uh, YouTube show. Yeah. About Marvel. I vaguely remember that. It was, it was actually really good. I enjoyed that show quite a bit. It's just, it was so time consuming. And at that point, I think I was still editing like 30 shows Everything. a week. Everything. <laughs> yeah, that was that was too much. Now I'm editing all our stuff, and he still won't call me back. Oh, oh, oh. but you're our little Gelman. It's okay. You're our little Gelman. It's fine. Scream it! You <laughs> <laughs> might drop. Out of this. Can I can I tell you you guys about a cool comic book though? Because I know yes, nobody sure. probably read it. Well, got, okay, like, first, first one's from Archie, so you know, deal with it. Well, good. If you like Darkwing Duck and DuckTales, I think you might want to pick up Super Duck number one. It's written by Frank Thierry and Ian Flynn, and the art is by Ryan Jampole. Unfortunate last name, great artwork. (laughs) It's Super Duck number one. This is, and this is, now this is on the Archie imprint, but I'm assuming not in the Archie universe. That's yet to be determined. Anything can happen when it comes to the Archie Universe crossovers, as we all know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> so far, well, so good. What What is going on with their superhero imprint? Because there is an Archie superhero imprint that they always threaten to do something with. That uh, I actually just looking for new talent and stuff. Like, um, they're they're going through a bit of a um identity crisis at this point with how Riverdale's turned out. And the actual like main Riverdale comic is actually more popular than the actual regular Archie book, so they're kind of having an identity crisis. And once they sort that out, everything else will kind of like flow like a waterfall, is what I'm assuming. I mean, now, the bigger. shield and um, the the shield and I think it's the fly and uh, the comet. Uh, mm-hmm. Those were Archie heroes, right? Yeah. But, yeah, but then they, they used to have those toys. Kind of like in universe about them, so it's like a whole thing. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Super actually... Duck was cute. You guys might like it. if you like. I said if you like Darkwing Duck, especially this is very in the vein of that like Duck Tales, Darkwing Duck nineties kids. Well, kind if of they thing. ever open the comic book stores again, I'm going to look for it, Lilith. Don't forget, it. you can get it digitally. Yep. On oh, yeah, that is true. Just so you know. That's how everything will be pretty soon. I, I mean, honestly, the movie theater industry is definitely going to change, I feel, and the comic book industry is going to change because of it. They can't dilly-dally and not make new stuff for too long or people will forget. There's too much great TV. <laughs> just, it was, it just is, That's just the truth. Too many it good is the books, truth. too many other things to do, you know? Actually, I think we'll we'll see a resurgence of indie, and I think the indie stuff, once it figures out the digital thing, I think that's when comics will become relevant to a new generation. Yes. I hope Alternative Comics really figures out their digital um, I do too. schedule a little bit better, too. I love Alternative Comics. I'm glad that they're like one of the only ones that are still going to be printing. I don't mind waiting for it. <laughs> so You know, you can get it on Etsy and Delivered. You don't actually have to go out to your comic local comic book stores, so... Just another Although thing I about encourage you to go to your comic book stores, you pull yes. up and they'll do yeah. curbside service. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, my, you know, yeah, my, sure yeah, my store's still open, yeah. <laughs> my, my guy's not. He's totally closed because he's in the mall, so, uh, yeah. you know. And I'm not driving all the way to Tampa, so. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> all right, I am done. You guys, congratulations on 150 episodes. I was talking to Martha earlier. I was like, that's 150 of Capes and Lunatics, but think of all the other shows that, that – led into this between arrow and uh flash all enough said stuff that is really kind of under this umbrella at this point uh it's pretty incredible we lilith and i did a show together we were on uh constantine and even that like all slipstreams right into this which is really cool so congratulations guys this is really awesome definitely congrats guys thank you guys a little that really felt heartfelt congrats you baby a little alone. I will not abide by this. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, no, no, thank you, guys. This is a great show, and it was a lot of fun to be on. 
I'll be back for trivia time. another night. <laughs> trivia. I'm, I'm not messing with Charlie on trivia. That's oh, it's going to be brutal. Already, well, I was showing Phil an example, and it just happened to be a Harry Potter example. He's like, "Oh, I don't know anything Harry Potter." I'm like, "That's not the point." But now you've just added Harry Potter trivia to whatever I do. So I'm going to smoke the hell out of all y'all then. What? I, wait, 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 wait. wait well, what? In Harry really Potter trivia? Uh oh, oh, do we have a little bit do we have a little other Harry Potter nerd? Oh, I love Harry Potter. My whole family loves Harry Potter. Then how come yeah. you've never done Trivia Mayhem? You run away every time we do Trivia Mayhem. Yellow Papa. I don't think I run away. You do. You run and then you slip outside a blue box because you fall all the time. <laughs> oh I, f- I fell once. Like As he was professing my I, love. I love how Rob has to go, but he'll make time to make fun of a little some more. <laughs> of course. I'll say this: I've never read a Harry Potter book. I've never watched a Harry Potter film. I still know an insane amount about Harry Potter, and I have no idea why. I'm telling you that fan fiction, that meta analysis, is not going to hold up. That's all I'm going to tell you. If all you know is Harry Potter is from Tumblr, you're going to lose. That's not enough. (laughs) Okay, we'll see. That is not enough. (laughs) Maybe I'll do some Twilight trivia for you there too. I'm sure Charlie will watch that one. You know you love that. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah. That's why he's looking forward to the Batman so much. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. I'm out. Although he was Cedric Diggory first, so yes, he was. Well done, Alil. Look at he's trying to show off. I'm not. I don't need to show off. <laughs> All right, I'm hanging up. Thank you guys so much, and congratulations, okay, Alil. Thanks for coming with me. All right, I'm leaving too. So you guys enjoy your show. Thank Nuff you. Said Thank you for me out. Is out. Nuff said. <laughs> Terrible. The old enough said. Okay. The old enough said. Okay. Um, well, those guys are gone. Uh, I mean, I, do you I mean, guys have any comic book recommendations for this week? Yeah, I was going to say, do we want to talk any more? I mean, me and Charlie re- did a yeah. few on Super Connectivity. Lil, did you read Hulk? Because we were talking about Hulk. No. No. I, I'm waiting. It was good. It was good. Yeah. I'm glad it's getting to be good again because it, it, it did kind of like dip a little yeah. bit. I wasn't interested. I'm glad this, when I finally do binge read. Yeah. It was seven seven fifty issue. Yeah, it was good. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Charlie, I know we talked about it on Super Connectivity, but Lilith. Yeah. Charlie was going on about an X book uh, on Super Connectivity. It was the X Men versus Fantastic Four one. Well, we talked about that. No. no, it was Hellions. Oh! Congratulations Hellions, on great. your discovery, sir. I loved Hellions. Hellions was a lot of fun. It uh, and really, I I just love uh, Mister Sinister. Basically, being you know, I'm totally evil, and you guys, for some reason, aren't kicking me out. And I know how stupid you guys all look for having me sit here at this table, and you guys are idiots. So I guess Mojo is going to come in next week. He's also going to join the circle. Who is? Because you know, he's also not a mutant, but he is a villain of the X Men. So obviously, he should be on Krakoa. Um, <laughs> I'm liking that they're addressing a lot of the issues that I had with some of the other stuff. So there's that for Hellions. <laughs> I did enjoy the artwork. I'm yeah. intrigued by the story. And I it, it was comical to me. I don't know if it was supposed to be. I don't know if anybody else found it. But I found a lot of comedy in this. So. Yeah, I can, I can absolutely see the, the humor in it. Um, you know, I like the obscurity of the characters they picked for it, you know. Yes. Uh, you know. Literally characters that I know from obscure eighties books and uh, the handbook to the Marvel universes, which is where I first I, I think saw we'll Wild say, Child. We'll say what, uh, and Havoc are the most known, probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah. yeah. Although whatever Orphan going Maker, on with though. Orphan Maker with Nanny, by the way. Okay. Yes, that was that was very cool, and um, oh, that's what sold, again, that's what sold Charlie. He was like, "Yeah, man, Nanny." <laughs> yeah. Bury in the lead, man. Always bury in the lead. Um, yeah, no, it was it was just a lot of fun. It it really highlights like why the entire current X Men universe X Men storyline is ridiculous, and I'm I'm there for that. You know, I'm just 100 percent there for that. Uh, so yeah, I, I loved Hellions one. I will probably pick up Hellions two, and it's got me interested in the new X Factor book. So if that ever comes Although out. Although I do want to warn people, if you do pick it up, it is four ninety nine. So just be aware of that. What? I think oh, it's worth the price. Was four ninety nine? Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even check. Oh, so. he didn't even notice it was. A, it must be good if Charlie Esther even noticed the price was higher. Yeah, you know, got his money. Well, you worth. know, because all this stuff had to be go, had to go through as a pickup. So you know, yeah, yeah, you know. So yeah, Empire Road to Empire was a four ninety nine book too. I could tell that some of these books were were a lot thicker than usual. So was was Road to Empire any good? Road to Empire, yeah, it was really good. It was really good. It. You know, it's kind of fun because it does, you know, it, it does tell the story of the scrolls and does give the scrolls view of it. And it kind of does come off in that way that, you know, that sort of, you know, um, noble warrior heroes line from uh, Captain Marvel comes off where it's like, oh, you know, the scrolls, we were a pacifist empire and we, we, we didn't conquer the words. We we just traded with them, and that was our whole thing. And then the evil b- barbaric Kree came along and killed the Koti co- and uh, started the war with the with the scrolls. Which which again, you know, they they're kind of depicting the Kree as cavemen, and then they give them just a little bit of technology, and all of a sudden the Kree are you know on par with the scrolls to wage an intergalactic war with them, which. In its own way, it's actually kind of impressive about the Kree. It's like you know, mm-hmm. it's you know, you know, it's you know, cavemen versus spacemen, and then someone drops a laser gun. Now it's a fair fight. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, you know, but I do love the the implication that all of all of Kree society is just based on found technology from the scrolls. <laughs> So again, stuff that's weird, and then you get a lot with the you know the Cree underground, you know the the Cree sleepers and the Krull sleeper scrolls sleepers and all the fighting and war that comes from that, and the quest for peace, and the celestial Madonna gets called out Mantis, which is really cool, and then in the end we get the whole thing with you know with Hulkling uh, uh, uniting the Cree and the Scroll to invade Earth. Yay! Because what's worse than 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 that than humans? You know, humans are the hey. worst. That's the moral of the story. Well, you know, humans are only the worst because they always win. You know, that's the thing. It's like they hate the humans because every time they try to invade the humans, the humans kick their butts. So, you know, they have they, and like one of my favorite ads they have in here is uh, yeah, you know. Um, this one where it's like you know the fantastic oh, yeah. four as you know these 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 monsters who just who invaded their world it's like no you invaded our world dude you know let, let, let's be clear who invaded who on this whole thing you know but they want to say oh we were pacifists and we were just a trading empire it's like no you were conquering people and shooting them I don't you know. may not want to but you know they were a trading empire like the uh east india tea company you know what i mean <laughs> that Re- that oh. Reed richard seems to get on everyone's bad side yeah, well, you know you know that that poor foreign exchange student victor von doom the kree the scrolls <laughs> oh and that was like the thing that really bugged me about uh x versus four is like oh i know you lie awake at like wishing you had that sliver that's missing from you, the thing that would make you on par with Doom. It's like, no, dude, you blew up your face. It's like there's, there's literally nothing about your life that I envy. Like, literally, there's not a thing in your life that, you know, the only thing is, like, like Rita's, like, just too cool to call Doom out for it. it, it you know, um, uh, um, you know, I really think if they ever do do a Doctor Doom film, they really need Curtis Armstrong to play Doctor Doom. Curtis Armstrong. Bugger? Behind the mask. Yeah, he, he is really great at playing characters who are... If you ever saw Dan Versus, which is an animated show he do, he did, you, you, you will totally understand why Curtis Armstrong is the one man who could bring life to Doctor Doom. Um, in fact, I highly recommend Bugger. everyone go out, look up Dan Versus. It is such a perfect cartoon, um, starring Curtis Armstrong. Well, I and, guess you know uh, you, some you, other people. You pull a Darth Vader, just have him do the voice. <laughs> well, no, I mean just put him in the armor, man. You know, isn't he like kind of short? He's like as tall How as tall Doctor Doom. Like, Doom's again, face. short, really short. <laughs> well, you know um, how <laughs> for yeah, a twelve-year-old girl. Yeah, well, and again, you know how tall is Tom Cruise? 
Is he taller than Tom Cruise? Is he taller than than uh, the guy that played Peter? It might be a tie. It might be a tie. Three apples. You know. I'm just saying he would be a perfect Doctor Doom. So that is my that is my that is my advice to anyone out there who is making a Fantastic Four film. Get Curtis Armstrong for Doom. Don't go with that traditionally handsome dude thing because. <laughs> Even the idea that Doom was traditionally handsome. Is that just what Doom tells everyone? That's his propaganda, yes. You know, it's like, no. You were this little Eastern European dude who showed up you 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 know, who showed up at at, at Empire State University and got kicked out because you cause you didn't follow the rules and you didn't check your math. Is that, you is, that, is that like when your Honda gets stolen and you say, tell the police, yeah, they stole my Porsche. It's like, oh, I was to be so beautiful. And Reed's like, no, you weren't. Shut up, Richard. It's a curse, Richard. <laughs> exactly. It's like, and think about that. Think about Curtis Armstrong. I'm just telling you, that is who should be doing. <laughs> oh. And he's I, actually I a like- really fantastic actor. Let me just actually preface that. We know Curtis Armstrong as a comic actor, but he actually is a really amazing actor outside of just being, you know, what he's famous for in his comedy, you know. Yeah, he's uh, great. He's great, in his, other, do- he's great in his Domino's commercials, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's great. He's great in Supernatural as well. So yeah. He's a really talented character actor, and I think he would be fantastic if they could get him into the Marvel Universe. And, I think, and also, I think, he's not on American Dad, my favorite thing he's ever done. Yeah. Well, we know you're always in the tank for American Dad, Lilith. It's so true. You know? Get past season eight. You can just start with season eight, just jump right in, and it is just, like, it is a pleasure. No, Charlie, make <laughs> Charlie, make him the Mole Man. I could do the Mole Man. I, I, I just feel that the Mole Man's a little one note for him. Okay. I, I think that as an actor, he would be better as uh, Doctor Doom. But sure, you could do Mole Man. Mole Man doesn't have to be a little person. <laughs> Although I don't like the idea if they make him a little person. I think that that takes away from uh, little people acting. You know, oh, I yeah, think yeah. that you know, I'm that's a that's a real like personal thing for me. Is like, dude, if you are a, a short person and there's a role for a short person, a tall person should not be doing a short person's role. Danny DeVito. Mole Man. I think we've said that before. Everyone said that. Danny DeVito and Joe Pesci for everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and again, fine actors that are known for comedies, but really, I, well, Joe Pesci, well, actually, Joe Pesci is actually, has people are very well aware of his comedy chops. He does do his his drama as well, but, you know, yeah, but all of these guys, when they do drama, they're really good as well. Come I here, mean, Spider. <laughs> Uh, Heck, you know, you you see Danny DeVito and throw Mama from from the train, and he is mm-hmm. he you really see what a fantastic actor he can be in that, where he can be comedic, but he also, you know, can be very much in his head as an actor, as a very professional performer. Twins. <laughs> yeah, well, that that one's much more of a, of a straight comedy yeah. role, and he can do that too. You know, that's a, you know. I'd love to see Arnold Schwarzenegger do something. I'd love to see Arnold Schwarzenegger do German cinema just to find out if he, he can actually act in German. I don't think that that's why he came here. Yeah, that may be why oh, he does but... only English language films. You know, it's like, no, if I do it in German, they will know I cannot act. <laughs> this accent is the only thing that people love me for. If I just, if, And this is how everyone talks in Germany. So, no, I can't do that. Um, I do yes, want to shout is- out a Volt comic. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm trying to make us friends at Volt Comics. So, okay. <laughs> but no, their books are really good and people don't really read them. So, you know, I figure. Um, they have a book out this week called No One's Rose Number One. Um, it's by Emily Horn and Zach Thompson with the art by Alberto Jimenez Albuquerque. Um, it's kind of like this dystopian place it's like this just this little green zone in this dystopian place and it's kind of like a, a YA angsty hunger games kind of vibe but the artwork is so beautiful the story is very intriguing it's a cautionary tale but it still has hints of like optimism is the best way that i and it's very like it's not steampunk i i don't know the word to use for it it's not steampunk but something along that line and the storytelling and the artwork and stuff. I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm, ugh, it's going to be a while for number two, but 
I is like, it more like a like a rebuilt punk? Like you know, like when you when you have a story that takes place with old technology that's sort of refurbished. Like the world has ended, so it's like post post apocalyptic. So yeah, kind of like a rebuilt punk kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's sort of the the, the road warrior aesthetic. As I've always yeah, said, exactly. one thing I learned from the road warriors is those people were really good at fixing cars. You have to be. Well, yeah, it really, it's it's one of these things where just. Obviously, in a post-apocalyptic world, if you can't rebuild a car, you are going to be dead. You know, you, you got to be able to repurpose old technology in that universe, or you know, which really means that it really is the best and the brightest of humanity who is surviving. Uh, that you know, Lord Humongous, he's actually probably a very well-versed person and very intelligent because uh, he's building these dang cars and these amazing death traps. It's like, well. Okay, obviously the human intellect is the dominant thing in the universe, so good for that. Yeah, I, I, I'm more into like sci-fi in my comics now, so like a lot of comics have lost their sci-fi edge, so I think that's really what drew me in. And it also has like this real cool like biotech in it and stuff, so cool. yeah, it's interesting. Very cool. Oh, hey, uh, Charlie, did you read Falcon and Winter Soldier number two? No, I did not get the chance to. Zemo's back already. You know that they're like, oh, Zemo's dead. Zemo's back already. Oh, of course he is. Frank Castle didn't kill him. He just took his hand. Frank Castle, you know, he's kind bad of... At his job. You know. He's bad at his job. He's bad at his job. He's not a good killer. Well, it, it doesn't is... hurt that Zemo's going to be showing up in that Falcon and Winter Soldier TV yeah. show either. Well, exactly. This is the thing about... Yeah, as we've always it's said, it's a with... doom bot. It's fine. It's fine. It's really a doom bot. We'll give Frank the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. Well, and for what it's worth, yeah. But <gasps> the man can't kill the kingpin, and he's a big target. Yeah. <laughs> no fat shaming on this podcast. It's not a fat shame. It's a big. The man is very broad shouldered. That's all I'm going to say. Thing. He is a physically. He's big all over. Yes. Yeah. See, he is a very <laughs> physically large target. He goes out in public. You know, you don't have to be a. You know. But he secretly knows once he does that. His mission is over. He doesn't want his mission to be over. It's a mental block. He's bad at his job, though. It's like, oh, I can't actually solve the problem of organized crime. Or it's like, he's always, it's it's the Punisher. It's fine. He's a menace, just like Spider-Man. It's fine. (laughs) Ugh, he's worse than Spider-Man. The Punisher. No, I don't like the Punisher either. Tristan, Tristan does not like the Punisher. Tristan's like you don't have a symbiote or anything. Tristan <laughs> does not at all. Um, You're welcome, yeah. Marvel. Oh, but so, no, I was gonna say that's the story. Whenever comics come back, Charlie S. Marvel give Charlie S. a story where someone's like selling all the villains uh, LMDs or something to fake their deaths. Well, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. You know, there there are so many great excuses for how there was a, a whole thing recently about the Abomination coming back and. Um, you know, uh, and you know, after he gets atomized and then he gets rebuilt. Oh, uh, this that whole Secret Wars two thing where yeah, yeah supposedly yeah. he. But, the, you know, yeah, they actually explained that in She Hulk. It was a uh, he was someone from Earth A who came over. The Emil Blonsky from Earth A came to Earth B, and he got turned into the Abomination because it's a tourist thing. He got to come in. He got to be the Abomination for a few weeks, and I got recruited by Mephisto because it's it's a grand it's a grand adventure, you know. And again, it's it was Secret Wars. Remember Secret Wars one? Doom was dead at that. T- well, his mind was in a different body. But remember, the Beyonder just plucked him from a you know a different point yeah, in time. Yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly. You know, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with it. So, but um, yeah, and that's 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 the Beyonder for you. Oh, but well, you guys really seem to think that Doom was important. So you know, <laughs> figured I'd bring him into it. <laughs> well, he's gonna have a toy. Yeah, well, you need the toy. <laughs> Although I love the fact that they actually had to, that they because they couldn't do capes, they had to actually make the Doom toy into the book. <laughs> oh, the art, yeah, the like the arm, big armor, like bulky yeah. armor, without the cape, yeah, yeah. Which I do think is the whole thing is I think they really had a hard time with capes back then. Oh, yeah, Doctor, which is true. That's why Doctor Strange wasn't showing. <laughs> exactly, final capes were were bare, man. Oh, you know, and 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 yeah, especially Doctor Strange, he's also got the loose fitting, fitting tunic. None of that stuff he's is easily moldable and, and reproducible. 
Because that's the thing is that, you know, you had to have characters that they could all have the same chest that you could print out and then just spray paint whatever you wanted on it. <laughs> that's why if you have any of those characters, you know, if you've played with them, all the paint comes off almost immediately. Yes. I had those, yes. Yes, they were very bad for that. But you didn't had... seal it with acrylic, you amateurs. I was six. What did I know? No. We um... were playing with our toys, Lilith. I was yeah. I was six or seven. I don't know what I was six or seven. I don't know what Charlie Esther's excuse was. I was playing with my toys. Phil. I love I, I love Lilith. She was like three years old. She's like, oh, this will have value someday. Don't take it out of the box. Well, like honestly, if, if a toy like has paint coming off of it, I'm gonna patch the paint and seal it. I'm not just gonna keep letting the paint come off. I've always been that way. So I don't know. See, she's the kind of person who, if she played D and D, would paint her miniatures. Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. So there we go. I did not know if you played D and D or not. So. It's um, been a while, but yeah, I do. There you go. Really? And yeah, uh, me, I don't paint anything. <laughs> just this I, I just, it's, very, it's very therapeutic and relaxing, to be honest, for me. So I can imagine. You know, people who like to do crafts usually enjoy them. That's why they do crafts. <laughs> Well, some I people like, do it because other, like, I know other people that paint their mini figs just so, you know, because other people paint their mini figs. They don't want to be you know, plain or whatever. Breaking news, 95% of people enjoy their hobbies. Well, that's, that's why I drink beer, because I very much enjoy drinking beer. I find it very relaxing. And I just I just want to say that, like, this, this is like a thing in our culture now, unfortunately. Like, your hobby can just be your hobby. It doesn't have to be your side hustle. Like, I'm yeah. so sick of that mentality. So sick. Yeah, because people are like, oh, why do you do it? What if you're not getting paid? It's like, maybe because I enjoy it? Yeah. Because not everything should be a quest for funds, you know? Damn Which you, is, capitalism! Like, Damn you! Well, it's just like the whole point of acquiring funds is to do things that you enjoy. Like, what's the point of funds if it's not to do something that's not... Everybody's making... a dragon now. They just hoard their money. Exactly. <laughs> Very good, Tristan. What's the point of funds if it's not fun? Um... T-shirt alert! T-shirt alert! There you go. And on that note... Okay, we can paint that. Tristan, he likes to paint things. You and Tristan would get along great, Lilith. You would paint things and have fun. Painting and stuff, talking about symbiotes. <laughs> Tristan loves crafts. You know. My biggest thing right now is I'm trying to teach him that you have to, like, before you can make a costume, you have to make a list of everything you need, <laughs> and you have to make and you have to make plans with measurements. You know? Oh, I'm going to teach him to sew? What? Well, if... I if when we get to that, you know, right now we're just trying to, I'm just trying to get him to think about three-dimensionally. Crap. Crap. Yes. Yeah, you know. How, yeah, exactly. Any like, good cosplayer would tell you prep is the is the best thing you can do. Prep and prep some more and revise and revise. Can you get exactly. that cheaper? And we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We may have to buy plans because apparently you can buy plans for your own Stormtrooper costume on Etsy. And we of may do that the first time, time, and that'll give us our incomplete list, and that's half the battle. And then we can follow that list to build our own Stormtrooper costume. Anyway. Anyway. Yes, and we can build it off of the masks you purchased, yes. So I think Lil wants to wrap it up. Okay, that's fine, man. I, yeah, I smell food, and now I'm hungry. On that <laughs> note... Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> send us your thoughts on... well. The madness that is Rob Southgate. Uh, what are you binge watching? What should we be? What, what should we be binge watching so that we could talk about it so you guys would enjoy it? What are your? Th I say Stumptown. I vote Stumptown. Picard. Oh, I love some Stumptown. Yeah, Philip. Another show board. based on a comic book. Stumptown. Oh, I only read the novels. Ooh, fancy. Oh, I think there's okay. I don't know. What a fancy. Bull, I think man. it's based on a comic book. I could be wrong. Oh, but and uh, send us your thoughts on uh, the animated Superman Red Sun because next episode we're going to be talking to Jan DiMatteis, a uh, famous comic book writer who also co-wrote the uh, Superman Red Sun animated movie. Ooh. Nobody tell Tyler. <laughs> <gasps> uh, I did he work on the original uh, comic book for it too, or no? I don't think he was on that one, but uh, I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna give that. I don't a read. think he's old enough to be on that one. <laughs> who DiMatteis? Yeah. He's been around. He's been writing comics since what the eighties, at least. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
but any, but yeah, I don't know if he was in the original comic, but I'm going to give him another read because it's been a few years for me, so I can compare the two. You don't read it every year, Philip. Shame on you. I, I tease. I, I go tease. through my library and <laughs> plus I got to read all this stuff for all these multiple shows now. You're a busy man, Philip. You know, like the Quantum Zone, Little Hellfire. What about our Quasar podcast, The Quantum Zone? Don't open the door, Little Hellfire. Anyway, yes, yeah, send your thoughts. There's sparkly <laughs> quantum tentacles out there. Oh! Sparkly. Sprinkle some pin particles on it, Philip. Uh, <laughs> I could sprinkle some pin particles on it to make it bigger. It's got to be longer. I need a full length one. Anyway, send us your thoughts to capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember to follow all of our social media all in one convenient place. That's linktree, L I N K T R dot E E slash capes and lunatics. And remember to support the sponsors because you saw it here yourself. Rob Southgate cannot afford pants. So yes. support, uh, go check out Tweaked Audio, Hunt the Killer, Pod Life the Book, now in digital and paperback. And yes, use that uh, Amazon link right there in the show notes to help support well, poor, poor Rob Southgate. Because as we saw, his figures are much smaller than everyone else's. So, all right, Lilith Hellfire. If you nerds want to hang out with me during my quarantine, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire or on Instagram at Lilith Hellfire sixty nine. I'm here for Dick. Grayson. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> all right the man the myth the stash charlie esser uh before i say anything else one thing i do want to say on uh four versus x is uh von doom saying you know insisting that they be called that the powers that give people superpowers be called von doom particles oh yeah even though it says yeah there's someone else who actually discovered this first they're called god the god for says they're von doom particles Again, Curtis Armstrong, your time has come. I told you, Doom was the first brand there in the Marvel Universe, man. Doombots, <laughs> even though Sentinel's not going to look like Doombots. Yeah. Anyway, if you'd like to talk to me about Doombots and Von Doom particles and all the things that Von Doom does, write to me in that old-fashioned email way that our moms and pas once did at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And, of course, don't forget to follow me on the Twitters as I live-tweet Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is coming back, they promised, at Charlie Esser, the C-H-A-R-L-I-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. And pause. And pause. <laughs> hey, I told you, man. Tristan's our, our comedy writer, man. All He's right. Good, man. So, yes. You've survived the Master Doom experience. Go forth, peasants, and spread the word. And for another week, we have been your capes. And Hassan. Lunatic. We should call the Captain Sam. What? Uh, Sam. Uh oh, I think the armadillos are getting there. Yeah. But everyone, the watch. Armadillos are. Everyone, go finish watching Picard. Season 1 finale was awesome. Especially that Riker part. You know what I'm talking about. Is he pantsless? That's all you, my friend.